Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ryan Pritchard broadcasting here from Hamlin Lions Club Field for tonight's high school football matchup between the Lincoln County Panthers and the Ripley Vikings. Tonight, Ripley comes in with a one and six record, and anyone who has been following Lincoln County's football success and has been few and far between as far as wins goes, Panthers are still winless, zero and seven on the season. But tonight, a good shot against the Vikings. What do you think, Brian Vance? Yeah, I do. I think tonight is a good shot. You know, I know they're one and six, and they play some tough competition, but I think we match up with this team. I think that, like, you know, Jerry, you've talked about it. We've got some kids back. We're healthy. I like the chances tonight. Jerry, how about you? Yeah, I like the chances of the win tonight um, with the only win for Ripley coming against Nitro. Uh, yeah, I think Lincoln County is going to come away with this one. All right, folks, well, I'm joined in the broadcast booth tonight by Brian Vance and Jerry Crum, along with the stat wizard, Jamie Jones. The eye in the sky. The eye in the sky. All right, we're just a few moments away from kickoff here, folks, and you'll have to excuse us tonight. We have technical difficulties with the scoreboard here at Hamlin Lions Club Field. The clock will not be shown, so I will call out the time as best I can. The time will be kept on the field by the officials. And tonight, uh, Jamie has already told me tonight, Brian Vance, that all of our Panthers on the roster are healthy and suited up, ready for action. Number seven is done for the season. Coach, let me know today. Well, that is good to see. Uh, Holly, he's good to oh. go, but he's he's not going to be able to play football. Okay, Brandon Holly, who was injured last week, Brian, as you know, was taken off uh, by the ambulance. He is here tonight, but he was not suited up, and he may be done for the season as far as that goes. I said he was done. He is done for the season. He's good. He's healthy. He's in class. He, coach said today he's good, he's healthy, he's in class, but his football career is pretty much done. You know, it, it it's kind of stinks, but, you know, we're just glad to see that the young man's up and about this week and, and able to make it to class. Yeah, health, I mean, his health's most important. I'm glad to see that. But, you know, I do hate for the kid. I do hate that, you know, anytime something like this happens in a football career, ends like that right there. It's, it's a sad situation. But again, I'm, you know, our prayers are with him and, and I hope he just does success. Absolutely. And again, there's always next year, fellas. Brandon Holly showed great promise these last few games filling in for you know, other injured running backs in the double wing attack that Lincoln County features. And, you know, ripping off a nice big run at Green Briaries for a touchdown and, and had several carries here last week before, you know, succumbing to the injury. So, you know, there's always next year, Brian. Well, like we said, you know, and we all know about the Parsons kid this year. I mean, how sad that right. was, you know, and, and, and again, I I'm glad to see he's doing well and he's healthy, and I'm sure he'll be successful. Uh, but you hate that for a kid that's worked this hard to lose a season like that. Right. And, again, folks, if you're watching this broadcast and you are an Armstrong subscriber, you're either watching on Channel 4 or Channel 100 on your television dial. So being an Armstrong subscriber brings you only the best in Lincoln County High School Athletics right here on the Panther Sports Network. So, again, Jerry, we've got Lincoln County at home tonight, 0-7 uh, on the season. Against Ripley, one and six coming in with a potent offense between basically two players and quarterback um, Trevor Tucker and wide receiver Cade Harrison. So what do you think? Panthers need to keep an eye on those two guys pretty much every play? Yeah, Lincoln County is definitely going to have to watch those two. It's a good team with ten of uh, the quarterback's touchdowns coming to that one receiver. They're going to have to do a couple things to try to contain him. Um, I think most of the game control, though, is going to have to come from managing the clock through running the football on offense. Okay, fellas, looks like Lincoln County has um, will be receiving here to open the game, which means Ripley will be kicking off. If you're watching on your television here on Armstrong, Ripley is in the white uniforms, white helmets with blue Viking horns on the sides. Lincoln County clad in all black with the Columbia blue and the Black Panthers on the side. The Columbia Blue. Jenny. Columbia Blue. Nice. All right, back. Okay, back teat for the Panthers to receive is 22, Dustin Cooper. And number one, Tanner Price. It looks like kicking off for the Vikings is number 30, Caleb Jennings. We're just moments away here from action, folks. Hamlin Lions Club Field. Ripley versus Lincoln County. There's the whistle. And there's the kick, a high end over end kick, and it will be fielded at the 10 yard line to the 15 to the 20. And both 25, 30. He's got a hole. 35 and down at about the 38 yard line. Nice return for Lincoln County on the game's opening play. Both that, of those kids have breakaway speed. They're gonna have, Ripley's going to have to watch them on kickoffs. Okay, so, Brian, here we go. First and 10 from the right, just outside the 35 yard line here in the first quarter, opening possession for the Panthers. See what these big O linemen can do. 
All right, here we go. Lincoln County, first and ten. Freshman quarterback Jake Ashley comes under center. Double wing attack. Fullback Blake Taylor right behind him. He takes, and Taylor's the first man through. Nice yardage on first down. Give him five, maybe six yards on the play. Correction, that's – Correction, I'm sorry, folks. That's Brian Miller on the carry. But, again, it's five yards on first down, Brian. Oh, good patient run. You know, hit the holes, kept his head up, looked for the hole, and exploit it. All right, here we go. Second down, and we'll call it five for Lincoln County. Double wing attack. Jake Ashley under center. Viking show five down line. A quick pitch out. Coming from right to left. And he's going to get positive yards. He's going to push the ball forward, folks, for a first down, Lincoln County. Another nice hole. A good, pu- a good push. Good push out of the O-line right there. We had Ripley definitely going back. The entire line was going back on that. If we can get that kind of push all night, it's going to be a good night. Yes, I like that. Runs first like down that Panthers. Why Lincoln County will win this game tonight. All right, folks, here we go. Lincoln County first and 10 at their own 48. We're just outside midfield. Chaz Wiley in motion. Takes a quick pitch from Ashley. Ashley leading the play. Wiley breaking free. Wiley 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Probably 11 yards on that carry, folks. And the Panthers look like they have rolled right at the sticks for a first down. We'll wait and see on the spot and what the referees decide. It looks like it's going to be close for a measurement. Referee takes, takes a look. He's going to call a timeout. And they're going to measure here, folks. But I'm guessing, Brian, from our vantage point, looks like we might have a first down again. I think so. You know, again, a huge hole again. Yeah, and it's good to see we got three different ball carriers, all three positive yardage. Good way to start out a ball game. Oh, the O-line right now, I mean, in the words of a, a former Hamlin player, John Smith, a gaping, gaping hole gaping. is what they're running through right now. All right, folks, here come the sticks out for the measurement. Let's see if the Panthers have enough for a first down or if they're just shy. First down. That is a first down for Lincoln County. So, all right, Brian, we've got uh, four, we've got three plays ran, two for first downs. I love it. Awesome. Nice eye, by the way. Nice eye to call the first down. Knew he had it, didn't you? Hey. Hey. Old your heads. Wore my glasses this week. <laughs> And we've got the spotter extraordinaire always. All right, Jake Ashley under center. First and 10 for the Panthers. A quick toss to Chaz Wiley. Wiley looking to get to the outside. Cuts it back in. And it's going to be positive yardage again on first down. Maybe four, maybe five yards on the carry before being taken down by number 53 for Ripley. And that is Jordan Ramsey on the stop for the Vikings. Giving six yards. It's going to be second down and four for Lincoln County as Ashley walks, trots back to the huddle with the play from head coach Derek Christian. That's two good runs by Chaz. Uh, that's they definitely it shows how they missed him last week in the run game. Yeah, it does. 36, 35, sorry. That's Brian Miller right up the Miller. Miller, Miller moving the pile with help from the lineman, and it's gonna be another Panther first down. You know, that's what run. That's what you love to see out of your running back. Keep them legs moving. Keep the legs turning the whole time. Brian Miller noses the ball forward with help from his lineman. And it's going to be another first down, I believe. That's three first downs so far on the drive. Brian Vance, and here come the Panthers on the Ripley Viking 29-yard line. First and 10 as true freshman quarterback Jake Ashley making his second start ever under center. Ashley takes give to the first man through, full back up the middle. That's Miller again. He's going to nose it forward for three, maybe four yards, depending on the spot. All right, we'll call that two. You know, that was the first play right there that I've actually seen Ripley's defensive line that made a decent play that wasn't getting moved. I mean, so far, our line has absolutely dominated their defensive line at this point in the game. Just keep this rolling. That's what we got to keep doing. Okay, here we go, gentlemen. Second down and eight for the Panthers from the Viking 26-yard line here in the first quarter. No score. Taylor. Quick toss to Taylor. Taylor grinding, grinding, digging, and clawing his way for a couple of yards, maybe one, maybe two on that carry as it was snuffed out quickly. And it looks like we've got a hobbled Viking on the play. Blake Taylor, carry. number six. Looks like Alex Hambrick for the Vikings. He's going to limp off to the Viking sideline. Tell you what, he made a good play right there, too. He made a good play, Ryan. I mean, he took on the blocker. Kip is outside hand free. Mm -hmm. It was just a good play to make that tackle.
Okay, here we go, folks. And it looks like for the first time tonight, Jake Astry is going to line up in the shotgun formation, running back on his right hip, and he's got trips out to his right. With a man in motion, Chaz Wiley takes and gives to him through the belly, and it's a reverse. It is a reverse, and that's to number 28. Flag on the play. That will be number 28. That's Blake Taylor on the reverse. And we do have a flag on the play. Stop was made by number 14. Let's wait and see what the preliminary indication is. Right as that play started, the flag came out. Tell you what, a lot of discipline shown right there in that reverse. He stayed at home. The defender stayed at home. That is so tough to do. It seems like it's a real simple thing right. to do. But in high school football, the aggressiveness, they're wanting to follow that play. So a good play. A good play out of him on that. Okay. We've got a false start against the Panthers. It's going to be a five-yard penalty, so we will replay the second down. But, again, a first negative play, Brian, just outside the red zone. Thoughts? Here we go again. You know, we had a nice drive. It seems like this has been our, our stuff that we've shot ourselves in the foot every time we get on this end of the field. You know, we hope to maybe eliminate some of this tonight. But it seems like every time we get down to this area, we end up making a, a silly mistake. Had uh, yeah illegal movement there on the outside, I think. Okay, so that's going to bring up a fourth down. And I like this. Panthers are going to go. Nothing Panthers moves. are going. And fourth and 11. Fourth down and 11. At this end of the field, it's a good call. From, where we're at. from the Viking 40-yard line, man in motion. Ashley takes from the shotgun. Rolls to his right, looking for a throwback. Nobody home. Intercepted by Ripley. Oh, my, the Vikings. He's got room to run. He intercepted at the 40. And he's to the 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Number five, Ryan Stutler takes it 60 yards to the house. He just got a gift. He just got to get. That was probably, you know, even the throws last week, that's probably the, the first really bad throw I've seen out of Jake yet. Bad decision by the true freshman quarterback, Jake Ashley. And, again, it costs the Panthers dearly is. As a freshman, you can Number see. Number five, Ryan to, Stutler. He was trying to really squeeze one in there, and, and there was nothing there, really. He had been well advised me to throw that one plumb out of bounds. Yeah, he should have threw that one out of bounds. Um, but you got to like the way that he stood in the pocket when the defender was coming right at him and still tried to make the throw. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's, it's a freshman. I, well, you said throw it out of bounds. I think he got a little gun shy there last week. He was called for uh, additional grounding two or three times, and, and I think he was a little gun shy there and went ahead and took a chance that normally he might not have. Yeah. Oh, that's and again, that will come with experience. Number 85. All right, and the kick is up. Good. Point attempt is good. Kick is up and good by Ripley's number 85. That is Easton Berry. So, with here in the first quarter, Lincoln County down 7 to nothing after a very promising drive. But, Brian, it's still early. Jerry, it's still early. We're still in first quarter of play. We've got to shake off that, that turnover and come right back and put another drive together. Exactly. I, I, we literally moved the ball, it seemed, at will on them the whole way down the field. Offensive line was blocking great. Running backs being patient, running hard. There's no sense to think that this should get anybody down. We can still win this ball game. Just an errant mistake, and it happens. Really, the first mistakes are with the penalty. And again, get in there the red zone again, and we end up making these penalties, shoot themselves in the foot. Okay, folks, we're back here. Hamlin Lions Club Field. Justin Cooper. Ripley leads the Panthers 7 to nothing here in the first quarter after an ill-advised pass by Jake Ashley was picked off and returned six yards for a touchdown. We have roughly eight minutes left here in the first period as Ripley approaches the kickoff, and there it is, high end-over-end kick, and it's going to be fielded at the 10. He's looking for the wall, and there will be no wall this time on this return as he is snuffed out after about three yards on the return. Panthers set up shop deep in their own territory just outside the 15-yard line. Line. Right. Wrong wall, wrong side. It was a good kick, and we tried to set up on the wall on the other side of the field here. Never could get to it. On their own 14. So what do you think, Jerry? Go back to the ground game, pound it away again? Yeah, you got to run the clock against any team, really, especially when you have a good, good three good running backs, actually. So, And it's, it's just now 7-0. to They've, There's still plenty of time left in this game. Okay, so here we go. First and 10, Panthers on their own 14-yard line. They're down 7 to nothing after a gift interception and a pick six by the Vikings. 
Okay, that's Blake Taylor on the carry for the Panthers, getting positive yardage on first down. Blake Taylor <clears throat> carry for the Panthers. Looks like Taylor's going to pick up three yards on that carry, which will bring up a second down and seven for Lincoln County. Again, you got to love it. Positive yards on first down, and we're picking up three, four yards a clip. You know, right now, it, it looks good. Offense is looking good. I think so. They're not going to let that score bother them, we hope. Ashley comes up under center. Double wing attack by the Panthers here on second down and seven. Man in motion from right to left. And he's going to give to the first man through 35. And Miller slips and trips. But he still gets a few yards on the carry before slipping on the turf. you got to hate that because you know what? That was going for about 10 more. That's oh, absolutely. That's that, Yeah, there was a nice hole there. And he was making the right cut. So it was good to see the vision he had right there. It was the right cut to make and just that little slip. Okay, so here comes a third down for Lincoln County, and we'll call it third and about four yards. To keep this drive alive, the Panthers need the 25-yard line. Ashley, double wing attack, takes, gives to the first man through, 35. That's Brian Miller bouncing to the outside. He will have that first down after being stopped by two Vikings. So it looks like Miller's going to pick up pick up five, maybe six yards on that carry, but it is enough yardage for a first down. And Brian, Lincoln County converted to third down. I'm going to tell you right now, that was close. That was so close. From right there, I thought he may be six right there. If he bounces a little, maybe more toward the outside, Just you think? a little more. Yeah, that was a touchdown-saving tackle by Ripley's defense. Yeah, it was. And okay. Warnock made that, wasn't it? So here we go. Fresh set of downs for Lincoln County. First and 10 from their own 29. That's Taylor coming up through the hole, and he's going to get positive yardage. Picking up three, four, maybe five yards on that carry. And again, positive yardage. The ground game is working so far here in the first quarter. Ripley leads Lincoln County 7 to nothing. Tackle made by Ripley's Jake Martin on that play. And while they need to keep running the ball, I think it wouldn't hurt if they threw in a few confidence throws for the young quarterback. Yeah, I hope this doesn't affect him at all. Don't let that confidence shook. It was just one throw. Hey, you're going to throw those. 35. Okay, that's number 35, Brian Miller on the carry. And again, he's going to pick up two, maybe three yards on the carry and bring up a third down and short again for Lincoln County here on their second possession. He's a hard the first runner. Every time he touches the ball, it takes Brian two or three Jones defenders to bring him down. Top of the interior line of third and two. Third down. Third and two. Here we go again. Okay, so we've got third down and two yards to go for Lincoln County from their own 36-yard line. The Panthers need the 38 at least to keep the drive going or bring, force a fourth and short. That's Wiley in motion. 35. He's going to take and give it to Brian Miller, and Miller's going to nose it forward, and he's going to be close again for a first down, Brian. I can't really tell from this angle. The spot, we got it. There we go. Move the chains again. I'm seeing something out of Ripley's defense. There's going to be something... There's going to be something that's going to happen here. I think it's going to get slipped in because if you see right now in the film, there are nine guys. Right. Crowded tight. All right, Lincoln County, fresh set of downs. First and 10 from their own 39-yard line as Chaz Wiley goes in motion, takes the quick pitch from Ashley, and he's going to be – he's going to nose it forward after breaking a couple tackles in the backfield, and he's going to pick up one, maybe two yards on that carry. But, again, positive yardage on first down, Brian, whether it's a yard or 10 or 5 or whatever. We're going forward, not backwards. And, you know, a good point was made right there. If we can keep gaining positive yards, our third downs are manageable third downs. You know, they're not third and long, they're third and two, third and three. Yeah, and, and Miller's proven that, you know, give him just two or three yards out, hey, he'll crack it right in there. Yeah. See, look how the, uh, if you notice, Ryan, look at the linebackers keep creeping up, creeping up. Creeping up, creep them up, creep them up. And there's the counter play. Lincoln County's going to get positive yardage again on this second down play. Third and short play. Blake Taylor on the carry. He's going to pick up three yards on that play, and it's going to bring up a, a third down and about five. We'll call it six yards, and a big third down coming up here for the Panthers from their own 41 after picking up two first downs on this drive so far. But Ripley leads seven to nothing, and their offense has yet to see the field, Brian Vance. Oh, we're doing exactly what we want to do. We're controlling the clock. We're controlling the field. Again, this just cut out silly mistakes. Third and five. Okay, so we have a third down and five here at Hamlin Lions Club Field for Lincoln County's second possession on offense here in the first quarter. Jack Ashley's under center. Double wing attack with a wide receiver split to his right. Ashley barks out the signal, sends his man in motion, takes there's a fumble on the snap, but Ashley, I believe, fell back on it. 
So it's going to be a loss on that play. It's going to bring up a fourth down, and they're going to send in the punt unit for Lincoln County. Again, a good drive. Got stalled there a little bit. But a good positive drive. And like I said, the offensive line seems to be controlling it pretty much. If we can keep that up all night, you know, it, it, it looks good for us. Okay, so back to punt for Lincoln County is Austin Scraggs. Scraggs takes and punts a short end over end kick, and it's going to be fielded by Ripley's number two. That's Jake Martin. Martin has a seam, and he's got some great speed. Martin up the sideline, breaking free, breaking loose. Martin, he's going to take it to the house, folks. There goes Jake Martin being trailed, being trailed. He's in the end zone for Ripley. Martin takes the punt back. Touchdown. About 70 yards. 70 yards on the return, and just like that, two miscues, one on the offensive end with the interception, and now we give up a special teams touchdown, and Ripley up 13-0 with the extra point coming, Brian, here in the first quarter. And their offense has not seen the field. Their offense has not seen the field. Now, is that just a great return by Martin, or did we have, you know, uh, we're sitting here watching it. I thought they had a couple guys on the side that may have had him. I think Martin made a great move, though, to break to spring two free. Two missed tackles. Two missed tackles right there. You just got to have it. You got to get him down. And it was a good run. I'm not really sure with this kid. It was a great run. Barry comes on for the extra point kick for Ripley. Soccer-style kicker gets it up, and it is good. Martin, extra point attempt. Easton Barry's extra point attempt was good. All right, folks, we're still here in the first quarter. Ripley is leading 14 to nothing here at Hamlin Lions Club Field. And, Brian, what we talked about in the pregame, uh, and Jerry as well, you know, Lincoln County is doing their part. They're controlling the clock. But, again, mental breakdown with the interception, taken back to the house. Mental breakdown on special teams, taken back to the house. You know, we're, down, we're in a hole again, 14 nothing. said, there's three phases to the game. Right now, offense has not – look bad at all. We've moved the ball on them. We've moved it well. The offensive line's controlled it, but unfortunately special teams are part of the game, and they win a lot of games. Taking off the Vikings on the 30th, Sam Jennings back to all right, here we go. So without Ripley's offense on the field, they have yet to take a snap from center, and they're leading 14 to nothing here at Hamlin Lions Club Field against the Lincoln County Panthers. There's the kickoff by Jennings. It's going, to, it's going to bounce out of bounds. That's going to be a penalty against the Ripley Vikings, and the Panthers will set up shop with a little better field position than the last drive, Brian Vance. Jerry, what do you think here on we'll see from the Panthers again on this drive? Do we see more ball control and try to put one in the end zone or what? They're going to keep running it, I believe. Uh, you know, Hopefully they can get better than two yards a game, maybe five yards at a time, and uh, some manageable third downs and hopefully keep going down the field and not stall towards the, end, towards the red zone. I'm not going to lie. What I would like to see here, if we keep them running the ball like we are, especially get a big first down gain, right. maybe slip a little play action in there on the uh, second down. Okay, so here we go, folks. It's Lincoln County's third position of the evening. Yeah, I think Their trail, the trail of the Vikings, 14 to nothing. First think, and 10 from their own 35. I think the play action would work good right now because you can see the linebackers and the free safety already starting to come up. Uh, the, the safety's only seven yards off the ball right now. Right. Chaz Wiley carries for Lincoln County, and that's a great gain on first down. He's going he's gonna to pick up eight yards on that carry. It's going to bring up a second down and short for Lincoln County. Panthers need something like that to deflate them and, and help us with a boost. All right, so Lincoln County still being able to move the ball against the Vikings here. So you watch the safety creep up. 35. It's number 35, Brian Miller. He's going to push the ball forward. That's going to be a first down for Lincoln County. First down, Panthers. And what a quality run because if you look, they're blitzing all their linebackers. All th- I mean, I think all three came that time right there. So to, to pick up yards like that tells you the line's doing the job and the running back's running hard. 
Okay, so uh, I was just speaking with the uh, stat wizard, Jamie Jones. Brian Miller's picked up two first downs for Lincoln County. They have a total of four here in the game so far, Brian. But again, they're on the wrong end of the scoreboard, down 14 to nothing against Ripley. Yeah, right now we're dominating the stats except for the scoreboard. Except the scoreboard, that's right. So here's Jake in, Jake Ashley under center, first and 10. Gives it to Miller again. Little fullback trap play there, and he's going to pick up maybe a yard on the carry as the Vikings' defense keeps creeping closer and closer and closer to the line of scrimmage. We'll give him a yard on that carry. Brings up second down and nine for the Panthers from their own 47. Just approaching midfield here in the first quarter, trailing the Vikings 14 to nothing. And this Ashley. has always been right now our Achilles right now. We need to gain positive yardage here. This might be in a third and long situation. All right, well, here's a little different formation. Price split out wide left to Ashley. Double wing attack, man in motion. Ashley takes, gives to the man in motion. He's going to be snuffed out in the backfield. That's number four, Trevor Tucker, who made the initial contact. Number 76. And then, and then number 76 from Ripley. Finished, finished him off, and that's a big negative play on second down. That's number 77, Isaac Kiefer, finishing out. Again, behind the sticks now. Not where we want to be at. Not where we're at. Third and long is not our strong suit. No, this is definitely probably a passing situation, too, as Ripley looks like they've backed up the safeties and the corners here on this play. Jake Ashley in the shotgun formation. Trips to his right. Three receivers sends Wiley in motion over there as well. Ashley's going to take a roll to his right, avoiding pressure. No, he will not. He will be sacked in the backfield. And that's, that's number 59 for Ripley. Jacob K on the quarterback sack. And again... Two negative plays back-to-back brings up a fourth and very long for the Panthers after this third drive showed promise after picking up two first downs, courtesy of Brian Miller. So now the Panthers are back to punt. That's Austin Scraggs for the Panthers, who will be punting. And my guess is this time we kick it away from Jake Martin from Ripley. Yeah, uh, that would be a wise move, and, and that's what we're doing. And Giving the sideline the... Oh, wow. And Martin's going to get hit and dropped after about a seven-yard return. Well, let's see what their offense has got. This is our first time tonight All to right. see what Ripley's offense has got and see what our defense has got. Okay, so here comes the Vikings for the first time on offense, leading Lincoln County 14 to nothing. That's right, folks. Lincoln County gave up a pick six on their first drive and then a special teams breakdown after a punt on their second drive, which led to two touchdowns for the Vikings. They lead 14 to nothing here in the first quarter at Hamlin Lions Club Field. All right, that is officially the end of the first quarter. Vikings lead the Panthers 14 to nothing. Brian, again, three three drives that showed promise till we got to about midfield and kind of bogged down. And the two, the, the, you know, the two mental breakdowns there, you know, the, the interceptions, it ends up being a pick six, special teams breakdown as well. Vikings up 14 to nothing. And it seems like it's the same story every week. We, we have yeah. really good drives. We move the ball well. We get down into the, close to the red zone, start making these mental errors. And definitely we have to avoid third down long situations. Right. Not our strong, not this team's strong suit at all. Okay, so here we go. We're going to be approaching a f- Vikings will have the ball for the first time tonight on offense. Leading Lincoln County 14 to nothing. Started the second quarter. Jerry, what do the Panthers have to do here defensively now? You know, they trail 14 to nothing, but again, a quick three and out would be great right now. A quick three and out or a turnover, uh, which you'd like to see an interception just like uh, the pick six that Ripley got earlier would be a big momentum change for the Panthers. It's time for this defense. They've, they're the first time on the field tonight. they got to pin their ears back and come out, grab it, and, and just go to work. All right, folks, looks like Ripley's going to start out in a spread formation. Tucker looks like he's going to be back in the shotgun there. Two. He's going to take, and he's going to give to the first man through the hole. He's fast. That's number two. That's Jake Martin, who returned the punt for a touchdown, and he's going, going 10-5, touchdown Vikings. Well, just like that, 52-yard play on first down, but we've got a flag on the play. Flag on the play, which was thrown as the play started. So this might be coming back, folks. We have an illegal shift against the Vikings. That touchdown is coming back. That was a good play and a good run. What worried me there was he had, again, a huge hole to run through right there. We had no penetration, and and nobody really touched him on that play. Right. 
Okay, so we're going to mark off the five yards. It'll be first down and 15 for the Vikings. But again, that play was eerily familiar to several plays we saw in the second half last week against Nicholas County. Huge gaping holes to run through and nobody in the secondary to catch the running back. Good thing was we got a gift right there. Let's take advantage of this. Okay, here we go. Trevor Tucker back in the shotgun. Sends a man in motion from right to left. He's going to take and he's going to fake. That's number 10. That's Cade Harrison, the state's leading receiver in class AAA, and he's going to be snuffed down for no gain as the Panthers have have one pair of eyes, maybe two pair of eyes on Harrison every play, Brian. And smart move. Good tackle, good open field tackle, too. And a kid, you know, that much speed and that much talent, just make the tackle. And that's tough to do in open field. Second down. Second down and 14 to go for the Vikings from their own 46 here in the second quarter, early in the second quarter. Trevor Tucker from the shotgun. He's going to take and give it to Jake Martin. Martin cuts up field, and he's going to pick up five, maybe five, six yards on that carry. It's going to bring up a third down and nine for the Vikings, just off, just on the other side of midfield. I've noticed we've got Tanner Price. is was definitely guarding number 10 there, and it's, it's going to be his job tonight to cut take him out of the ball game. If we can do that, I, you know, again, we could probably have some success against this offense. Okay, here comes a third down play. Let's see if we can convert. Trevor's going to take and fire deep down the field, and that is caught by Cade Harrison, and that's good enough for a first down. And that was an example of the reason that Tanner Price needs to be getting physical with number 10 on the line. He played way too far off of the big guy. It's going to be 17 yards on third down, Brian, and the Vikings are moving. The Vikings are moving. The Vikings are moving. Yeah, he found the, found the seam in the zone right there. I mean, that's what he's supposed to do. Vikings come out no huddle. Here we go. First and 10 for the Vikings. Speed option to number two. That's Jake Martin from Trevor Tucker on the option. He's going to be wrapped up, but he's going to pick up. Fumble. There's a fumble on the play. Lincoln, Lincoln County, County had the football. Let's see what the referee says. He's pointing in Lincoln County Panthers, and there's the break, folks, that Jerry Crum just alluded to that we needed to snuff that drive. Panthers pick up a fumble, and they're going to be taken over first and 10 after Ripley's first drive was scary. Yes, it was. They were actually had a lot of success. What worried me, that third and long play seemed way too easy. I mean, it was a simple drop back, nice pass, no pressure. But you know what? That's what we play this game for. Turnovers do happen. Now let's capitalize on this turnover. All right, Panthers in a hole, down 14 to nothing. Here in the second quarter, have a first and 10 from their own 23-yard line, and the Panthers are going to call timeout. The turnover was what they needed there. Uh, it being, you know, if they would have taken it down and scored, it would have been 21 to nothing, and it just being the first quarter still would have been hard to come back from that score. And, and I got a little advantage here with binoculars. Uh, really, really good heads-up play. Had three Panthers over there punching and swatting at that ball. Um, even if he would have held on to the ball, he was going to pay for it. So good job by the Panther defense there. They knocked that ball loose and jumped on it. Well, now now it's up to us. You know what? Hey, we've given them enough gifts tonight, okay? It's yes. Time, it's time now to take this down, to get a positive drive, to score out of this. We do that, it's a ball game. It's a real good ball game right then. I agree, Brian. So we're here during the timeout. Panthers trail the Vikings 14 to nothing here in the second quarter in Hamlin Lions Club Field, as we talked about earlier in the pregame broadcast. Jake Martin burned the Panthers quite a bit last year, uh, but it was Cade Harrison also. You know, Ripley has very good skill, skill position players. Panthers have to take advantage, and right now we have to take advantage of that turnover we just got. We do. Okay, so 14 to nothing. Ripley leads Lincoln County here in the second quarter. We've got trips out here to the right as Jake Ashley, first, his second career start. True freshman in the shotgun with a running back on his right hip. Since a man in motion, he's going to take. That's Ashley going to keep on a bootleg. Here's Ashley coming around, turning the corner, trying to find the corner, trying to find a little help from his friends on the block. He's going to pick up positive yardage, two yards, maybe three on the carry. I'm going to show you what that tells you, a lot of athleticism right there. I think it was actually a busted play. Three May have been. So to pick up three out of that, shows a lot of athleticism out of a freshman quarterback. And, of course, as everybody knows, Jake Ashley had great success in the middle school ranks at quarterback here at Hamlin, at Hamlin Middle School. And now he dons the Panther black and Columbia blue. Second career start for the freshman QB, Jake Ashley. Well, Jake Ashley played really well against Nicholas County last week, especially during the first half when he put the ball in some difficult places and really showed some promise for his future. 
35. That's number 35, Brian Miller looking for a home. Brian Miller is loose, folks. Beacon County is loose. That's Brian Miller. He will not be denied. He's going. He's over midfield to the 45-yard line. And they started that started that ball from the 25, and he's down to the other 45. That's a pickup of 30 yards for Miller on the carry. 32 yards on the carry, and that's a big first down for Brian Miller and the Panthers. Down 14 to nothing here in the second quarter against Ripley. Big boost. That's what they needed. Tell you what, that was a hard run right there. He broke about three tackles on that play. A little breathing room. Okay, so the Panthers break the huddle. First and 10, and they're on Ripley's side of the field at the 45-yard line. Jake Ashley, double-wing attack under center, takes some pitches to Chaz Wiley. Wiley's looking for room, and he will find none, maybe a yard on that carry as the Viking defense snuffed him out. Hey, well, Ripley's showing some good pursuit. It seems like that yes. right there is just not developing. They're really getting the ball on the outside really quickly. Yeah, the pursuit angles were there. Ashley has the call from head coach Derry Christian here in the second quarter. Panthers trail the Vikings 14 to nothing. But has stopped the Vikings on their initial offensive drive of the evening with a turnover, picking up a fumble deep in their own territory. The Panthers are on the move. Second down and nine for Lincoln County. Reverse to Chaz Wiley. Wiley is loose. He's got a block. Wiley turns on the Jets. Wiley, Wiley, Wiley is tracked down from behind, but not after a nice big game, which started at the 45-yard line. Wiley, 29 yards on that carry, Brian, and the Panthers are growling and roaring, and Panther Nation finally has something to cheer about here at Hamlin Lions Club Field. I would tell you the one way to stop pursuit is to hit it the other way. You reverse the other way because exactly what we did right there, we took advantage of them pursuing the football. And and get a defense guessing two big back-to-back plays like that, that's going to open things up and maybe, maybe Ashley can get off a pass here. All right, folks, here we go. First and 10 for Lincoln County at the Ripley Viking 16-yard line. Second quarter, they're trailing 14 to nothing. That's number 35, Brian Miller, and he is tackled by a host of Vikings, but not after picking up maybe four, maybe five yards on that carry. So we'll mark the Panthers down at around the 12-yard line. That's a pickup of four for Miller and the offense. Second down and five for Lincoln County. Coming up here, Brian, just no, ball just outside the 10-yard line. I'm going to tell you right now, the interior line of that right there just pushed Ripley back about five yards right there on that play. An excellent job. All right, Lincoln County second down and five from the Ripley 12-yard line. Double wing attack. Everybody in tight. And we've... We've got a play started, but the flag came out, and I believe it'll be against Lincoln County. It's a false start against the Panthers, so it's going to back them up five. And again, Brian, negative play in the red zone. Still second down. These plays, it, it really does. This just kills us right here. Sure. It just kills us. Line was getting a little edgy. Again, a lot of this is youth, though. I mean, we are a young football sure. team. Sure. They're, they're going to get more. The more experience they get with this, you know, the better they're going to get right. back. Right, right. So instead of a second down and five, the Panthers face now a second down and we'll call it a short 11 as the stick, as the down marker is just outside the 10-yard line mark. Panthers second down from the 17-yard line of the Vikings. He's going to take and give it to Blake Taylor right up the middle, and he's going to be stopped maybe a yard on the play. It's going to bring up a third and long for Lincoln County. Nathan. Again, it looked like we were trying to uh, get more of a little bit of that uh, counteraction mm-hmm. to try to negate some of their pursuit, but they caught up with us that time. Okay, third down. Okay, so third down and 10 for Lincoln County. Coming up. Ball resting just outside the 15-yard line here in the second quarter. The Panthers trail the Vikings 14 to nothing here at Hamlin Lions Club Field. Big third down for freshman Jake Ashley and the Panther offense. I think you should watch for a play-action pass right here on this play. Don't pass. Uh-oh. Ashley's got a man, and it is tipped and dropped. And that pass was intended for Taylor out of the backfield there. And that pass is going to be dropped and incomplete, which brings up a fourth down and 10 for the Panthers. Ball on the 16-yard line. Brian? And good play. And you said this earlier. I'm going to give Jake a lot of credit because he stood in the pocket with pressure coming. Stood strong, made a good throw. Right. Okay, so we're going to have a timeout here. Panthers are going to call a timeout, facing a fourth and ten from the Ripley 16-yard line. So, again, Brian, you're down 14 to nothing midway through the second quarter. Field goal, you may be out of the question here. We have yet to attempt one this season. 
Got to go. Got to go. And right now, uh, Coach Christian, you need to come up with the play. You need to come up with the play. Now, we can still get a first down here. It's not a goal, goal line situation. We need to come up with the play to get this and capitalize right. on this. Again, you notice we moved the ball down the field really quite easily. Yes, we did. All right, I'm going to turn this one over to Jerry, who's two for two on play calls tonight of the Lincoln County offense. All right, Coach Crum, what do you call on fourth and ten from the 16? Uh, just It's just going to be a run to the outside here with uh, Chaz Wiley, I believe. Um, if not, I would watch for a play-action play, action play uh, with a shot to the end zone. I don't think they're going to – if they do play action pass, they're not going to go for the first down. It's going for the end zone. Well, I just uh, was given a stat drop here from the stat wizard, Jamie Jones. Brian Miller's got 69 yards through, so far through the first half, Brian Vance, on 11 carries. Three first downs. And he's picked up three first downs on those 11 carries. All right, so here we go. Split receiver to his right. Ashley's in the shotgun. On fourth and 10 from the 16, Ashley straight drop back, and he's going to be pressured. No blocking up front from the Panthers, and he's going to be sacked in the backfield. 52. Brady Randolph. Number 52, Brady Randolph for the Vikings gets to Ashley unabated. If he would, have, mean, had, if he would have had one more second on that play, he had a receiver on the outside wide open. Vikings yeah, on literally a second, wasn't it? Yeah, well, that's all he needed because he saw him. He was looking right at the guy. 26. Okay, so the Panthers fourth down. That's Ashley's second sack of the evening by the Viking defense, and here comes – Trevor Tucker and the Viking offense. He's going to take and fake it to Martin. And that's Tucker picking up positive yardage for the Vikings on first down from their own 26-yard line. Six yards on the play brings up second down and four for Ripley, leading 14 to nothing here midway through the second quarter. Tucker's quick. First time I've seen him run tonight, he's quick. Second down, Tucker's going to take, and he's going to fire deep. Looking for Harrison. He's got him. And he's going to be tracked down at the 15-yard line. Well, that's Cade Harrison on the reception. We can and that's from the 26-yard line all the way down to the 15. That's a big play for Ripley's offense. That play right there shows you why Cade Harrison's averaging over 25 yards a catch. On the 15. You can also see why he's uh, Tucker's favorite receiver. Also, well, that's – well, he you can boost his average up. That's a 60-yard catch and run for Harrison from Tucker. First and 10, Ripley from the 15-yard line. He's going to take and give it to Jake Martin. Jake Martin's going to fight for some yardies. He's going to pick up positive yards, five yards, maybe six yards on the carry as the Vikings inch closer and closer to the Panther end zone, Brian, inside the 10, down to the 9. Well, guys, what do you think? It's time for them to get some negative plays here. You can see why Harrison is uh, the quarterback's favorite target. He's got good hands. He's a tall player. But I think the last play was actually more of a result of the cornerback just playing a little too far off once again. Well, from the nine-yard line, it looks like they use Harrison as a decoy as Tucker finds Cody Harris on a quick slant, and that's an eight-yard touchdown. And the Vikings' lead just went from 14 to nothing to 20 to nothing with the extra point upcoming, Brian Vance, here in the first half. That one was easy. That one was a little too easy right there. I mean, it was a, it was a simple slant pattern. Receiver was wide open. Right. Again, we've got a task to try to contain that quarterback, but if they're throwing the ball like this, it's going to be real tough tonight. We're going to have to find a way to get some pressure put on him. Good. Easton Barry. And Easton Barry's kick, extra point kick, is good. So right now, every time Vikings lead 21 nothing here at Hamlin Lions Club Field, Jerry. Every time they went to the air this evening, it's been a pretty easy pass, pass and catch. It doesn't even look like... You know, the defense is trying to play physical. Well, you know, on that same token, he, uh, Tucker's got all day back there in the backfield, Brian. I mean, he, you know, he can come off preliminary receivers if he wants to if, if they're not open. But here's the thing, what I'm seeing on their first two drives, granted they've only had the ball maybe seven or eight times, they've got guys running up open all over the place. Yeah, right now that's what it seems like. It really does. Like I said, you know, we, we saw the stats he put up, you know, the quarterback put up, and he throws the ball well. I mean, he really does. Right now they have they have some athletes. They have some athletes. We're going to have to counter those athletes right now. Again, though, we have dominated. Jerry, would you agree? We have really dominated time of possession. We've controlled the clock. We just seem like we keep shooting ourselves in the foot every time we get in the red zone. And it's, and it's, 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 it's sick of hearing 
it's been the same thing every week. It seems like they'll get down in the red zone and stall out, and it's happened, I think, twice in this game already. And uh, you're still, still in the – and actually, excuse me, you're in the second quarter now. All right, so Ripley kicks off to number 22, Dustin Cooper for Lincoln County. Five yards on the return, and Lincoln County was set up first and ten at their own. Cody Harris. At around the 15-yard line. Here in the second quarter, trailing the Ripley Vikings 21 to nothing. This needs to be a real – we need to stick one in right here. We need to to score. Have to. We need to score right here. And, again, shown positive yardage the whole game so far. I bet you if you look at the time of possession, it's not even close. Oh, it couldn't be. It couldn't be. No. No, no, no. How many plays does Ripley run on offense? Okay, so first and 10, trips to the right for Lincoln County's offense from their own 15. Jake Ashley back in the shotgun. He's going to take and give to the running back on his left hip. That's Brian Miller. Brian Miller's getting a lot of attention now from the Vikings defense, and he picks up maybe a yard on first down. Looked like he slipped a little bit, a little bit then right there. Looked like he slipped a little bit on that run. I think he was trying to make a quick cut. The hole was there, it, the, the cut he was going to make. Okay, so second down and nine for Lincoln County here in the second quarter, trailing the Vikings 21 to nothing. I was just dropped a stat from our stat wizard, Mr. Jamie Jones, Brian Vance, Ripley. Nine plays offensively have been run. Nine. Nine. That's number two, Chaz Wiley breaking free. And he's going to pick up a nice chunk of yardage here on second down. It's going to bring up a third down and short for Lincoln County. Wiley, the ball carrier. Uh, just a little update here on some scores throughout. All right, the, let's drop some scores on us, Brian. It's like uh, the Nicholas County uh, is up 21 to nothing on uh, Riverview early in that contest. Okay. How about Cabell, Midland, and Spring Valley, Brian? Uh, it looks like Midland's up 7 to nothing in the first quarter on that game. Okay, so with 440 left here in the first half, Lincoln County trying to pick up a third down. And that's Brian Miller. He's going to break one tackle, and then he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage by a couple of Vikings. And he didn't get a thing on that carry, folks. He didn't pick up a yard. Brings up fourth down and looking at like about three yards to pick up the first. Brian, deep in your own territory, trailing 21 to nothing. At this situation right now, though, in this field position, you got to kick this. you got to kick this or it's going to get way out of control early. And that was his 13th carry for the night. I mean, he's been doing good, but Coach C may want to saddle up a different horse. Seems like they're showing a. Uh, they're, they've kind of figured out. He's figured him out a little bit, so they're going to key on him a lot tonight. Scraggs feels a high snap, and he gets it off, and that's a short wobbler, and it's going to bounce out of bounds for Lincoln County on the Ripley side of the field. Though. It's going to go out of bounds. Goes out of bounds. On about the. Uh, that's going to be the Panthers. 44 yard line here in the second quarter. A little bit over four minutes to go here in the first half. Lincoln County trails the Vikings 21 to nothing. And here comes Trevor Tucker, Cade Harrison, and company with a short field, Brian Vance. And it looks like it's happening again, just like last week against Nicholas County. Short field, short scores. Yeah, it's exactly what happened against Nicholas County. Tucker's going to take, and he's going to fake the handoff to Martin. He's going to weave his way through, pick up positive yardage. 10, 11, 12, maybe 13 yards on the carry for Trevor Tucker in the Ripley offense. That's a first down, 13 yards on the carry. And the Vikings moving at will against the Panthers' defense, Brian. You know, in the pregame, you said he was a dual-threat quarterback. We see why now. He's Absolutely. Quick, he runs well, throws well, and he's a good ball player. Ripley goes with no huddle as Tucker calls the offense from the line of scrimmage. He's going to take drop back looking for Harrison. Harrison is wide open, and he catches it again. He's going to pick up 10, 15, maybe 16 yards on that carry again. First down, Brian. State's leading receiver looking very much like he plays that part. I tell you what, though, you know, the coverage wasn't that terrible in that play. It really wasn't. We were there, and like I said, as we gain more experience, some of these young kids, they're going to make plays on that ball. I mean, they were there, just didn't make the play on the ball. We'll have to take advantage when the quarterback wants to run. He's getting brave. We're going to have to take a, you know, welcome him to Hamlet. Okay, so Tucker on first down takes and gives it to Jake Martin, and they finally found him that time, Brian Vance, stringing out the play. He's going to get little or no gain on first down for the Vikings. Yeah, that was a good play. And Scraggs. And Scraggs came up on that play, you know, didn't wait on him, right. initiated, initiated the contact. It was a really good play at him. Okay, Jerry, here comes the Vikings, second down, and we'll call it 11. One thing I've noticed about uh, Tucker is that he tends to stare down Harrison, so hopefully the defense can pick up on that and maybe jump on the ball. 
Okay, so Tucker's going to take and give it to Martin. Martin's going to break free. Martin's got a block out in front. 10, 5, touchdown Vikings. And just like yeah. that, lightning in a bottle, Brian. The Vikings definitely took a big sip on that one. And that was maybe four, maybe five plays on that drive, two first downs. You start on your own opponent's side of the field, and it doesn't take long to put one in. I, you know, there was a missed tackle there, but again, I think it was Scrag, Scrag again that missed that tackle. I mean, that's a sophomore that's coming from the safety position that has a chance to meet the guy in the backfield. You know, so that's an, it was an aggressive play on him. It was a good run. Uh, definitely some good blocking on that. But I do like the fact that our safety's coming up and meeting him in the back good. you got to like that aggressiveness. Okay, we're awaiting Easton Berry's extra point kick. It is up. The left footer puts it through, and it's good. So with a little less than three minutes to go here in the first half, the Vikings lead the Panthers 28 to nothing. And, Brian, the Panthers showed promise their first few drives, you know, giving up the interception for a pick six, and then the special teams breakdown for a, t- for a big, long touchdown. Then the Vikings come out on their first drive finally after stopping the Panthers and fumble it away. And Lincoln County takes that, pushes it all the way down, all the way down inside the 10 and comes up negative on fourth down. The Vikings come right down the field and boom, boom, boom. Harrison's in the end zone, 21 nothing, And then, of course, Harrison and Tucker lead the offense again after a short punt on the Panthers' side of the field. Five plays later, you know, they're in. It's 28 to nothing. Jerry, what do you think? What? How can the Panthers stop this right now? Well, uh, already early in the game, it's 28 nothing, And I think you're going to have to see – the Panthers throwing the ball to get back into it. Okay, so with a little... All right, I just got a stat from the stat wizard, Jamie Jones. Cade Harrison, four catches, 102 yards in the first half. Pretty good first half. Pretty good? Pretty good. Pretty good. That's Dustin Cooper fielding the kickoff from the Vikings. He's going to take it up the sideline. Coop's got moves. Coop's got room, and he's going to get a nice return. He started at his own 10, and he's going to move it up past the 30, almost to the 40-yard line. We'll wait and see where the referee spot, but that's a great return after a touchdown. Panthers are answering, Brian. They're still fighting this Lincoln County team. I'm going to tell you right now, that's the one thing you've got to love about this team. You've got to love it. They have heart. They're not giving up right now. It's 28 nothing. A lot of teams could just pack it in. They're not. 35 dominate the statutes on first one. Okay, so here comes Jake Ashley. And the shotgun, as Jerry alluded to earlier, maybe the Panthers are going to start putting it in the air to try to play a little catch up here, trailing 28 to nothing late in the first half. First and 10 from their own 39-yard line. There's a fumble on first down. Ashley smothers the ball and keeps possession. That's a big loss, nine, maybe 10 yards on the loss. It'll be second down. Second down and long for Lincoln County. And again, starting off negative play on first down, Jerry. Uh, Despite the big loss there, you see a veteran move and a young quarterback by just laying on the ball and not risking the turnover. All right, so second down and long for Lincoln County, trailing the Ripley Vikings 28 to nothing here on a rolling clock in the first half. Slowly approaching halftime, Panthers have one timeout remaining here in the first half. He's going to take and pitch it out to Taylor. Blake Taylor picking up positive yardage for Lincoln County on second down long. He's going to pick up four yards on that carry. It brings about third down and about 15 to go, Brian, for the first down. The Panthers need the midfield stripe to keep this drive going. Not our strong suit right here. Third and long in this team right now, it's, it's not our strong suit. But we, need, we need somebody to make a play right here. Well, currently, Brian, I was looking at the stat sheet here, thanks to Jamie. One for seven on third down conversions for Lincoln County here in the first half. One for six. We're getting ready to do this. Oh, one for six. This is third down number seven coming up here, Brian. Okay, so Jake Ashley under center. He's going to take. Drop back. Play action pass. Looking deep down the field. He's got a man, and oh, it's picked off. By Ripley's number three, and he's got room to run. He's going to – Number three, Cody Harris for Ripley has intercepted Ashley. Cody Harris. And that is the second interception for Ashley on the night. He had the right idea, but Harris back there playing midfield did his job at free safety, Brian, and just cut the pass off and – Inter- you know, intercepted the pass right there in front of the receiver. Well, I see what Jake's doing right there. Really, it was almost like a one-on-one coverage. So, you know, right. Jake may have thrown it. Not a bad ball. The receiver needs to help him a little bit there. Sure. 
Okay, so Tucker and the Viking offense. First and 10 from the Lincoln County 30-yard line. He's going to take a straight drop back from the shotgun. He finds a man, and it is dropped. Had a man wide open, and I believe that's Harris again, number three, who drops the pass on, I'm sorry, number five. And, you know, Ashley's not really getting any help from the offensive line right now when he drops back to pass. The pressure's right in his face almost instantly. So good pursuit there by the Lincoln County interior line from the defense. And here we go. No huddle for the Vikings. For second down and 10 from the 30. Tucker's going to take state straight drop back from the shotgun. Looking for a man who's wide open. He's going to spin at the 5. Down to 3, 2, 1. And he's pushed into the end zone. That's a touchdown for the Vikings. 30 yards. Five. And that is number 5, Ryan Stutler, who dropped the pass on the furious play, Brian Vance. But he makes up for it in a big way. Takes it 30 yards to the house and rolls into the end zone. And the Panthers are down 34 nothing with the extra point kick coming right before half time a little bit of a blown coverage there because you can see the outside guy uh the cornerback had him covered well and he kind of split the seam right down through there and, and the defender just kind of let him go at the end there so it was a blown coverage but again you know with youth you're going to learn that you're going to make these little mistakes so barry lines up and he's waiting the extra point kick there's the snap, the hole, and the kick is up, and the kick is good. So, with a little less than two minutes remaining here in the first half, it is 35 to nothing in favor of Ripley over Lincoln County. So, again, turnovers turn into scores, short field, quick scores by the Vikings. You can see why, folks, if you're watching here at home, the lead has ballooned to 35 to nothing here in the first half. Got a few updates for you here on some uh, scores. Uh, Looks like uh, the Mingo Central Logan game is Mingo Central 14 Logan nothing in the second quarter. I do believe I took the money in the pregame broadcast. It uh, looks like Midland, but it's early. Midland's up 14 nothing on Spring Valley. Oh no, I don't think I picked that one very good. Spring Valley's going to spring a trap in the second half, Brian Vance. Go Wolves. Uh, the uh, Wayne uh, Pioneers are up uh, 42 to nothing in the second quarter. So it looks like uh, they're continuing to roll. And Huntington's up 21 to six in the second quarter. Again, the Highlanders looking very strong this year. Okay, so there is the Jennings kick, 22. and it's fielded by Dustin Cooper from the 10. 15-20, and he's met hard there at the 25. After a 15-yard return, Cooper is bent backwards and stopped dead in his tracks by the Vikings special teams. But again, Lincoln County trailing 35 to nothing here at Hamlin Lions Club Field, and they've got a, about a minute and a half left here in the first half to maybe get something going positive into the locker room, Brian, at the half. And that's what they need to do right now. I think something positive right now would, would really help their attitude in the second half right now. First and 10 for Jake Ashley and the Panther offense from their own 22-yard line. 32-yard line, excuse me. 35. He's going to take and give it to Brian Miller right up the middle. Brian Miller's going to get a yard, maybe two, before he's stopped by the interior line of the Vikings defense. The interior line of the Vikings. I think he's doing good to get back to the line of scrimmage. Gain of one, second down. Generous. All right, so second down, and we'll call it nine here for Lincoln County. Trailing the Ripley Vikings 35 to nothing here in the first half. And, lo- folks, that's going to – that's the end of the first half. Your score, Ripley leads Lincoln County 35 to nothing. It's been all it's built up to be, Brian, as we talked about you and myself and Jerry in the pregame broadcast. It's been Trevor Tucker. It's been Cade Harrison. But it's also been every side of the ball as – Ripley has scored on offense. Ripley has scored on defense. And the special teams chimed in with a punt return for a touchdown. Uh, the three phases of the game that you have to win right now, I have to have to give them the edge. They've definitely shown they have won all three phases of the game right now. Like you said, they've scored all three all three ways you can. Yeah. I want to chime in real quick here. We're getting a chance to see this, uh, the Ripley High School marching band. Uh, I've had the privilege of seeing them in some of the competitions this season. Uh, it, it's a really, really good show. Um, I, I'm glad that they're here tonight. So, just wanted to. I, I, I'm a band parent, so. But they they have a really nice show. And speaking of which, uh, there's a competition tomorrow. Is that correct? Yeah, the uh, Marching Panthers have two competitions tomorrow. They're in Wahama, and also they're going to make the trip down to um, Herbert Hoover. So the the Panther band's been doing pretty good this year. Hopefully uh, tomorrow's the end of the season. Um, 
thank goodness in a way. But uh, hopefully they come out and, uh, and rack up some more trophies. They've, they've been doing really well in their class this year. Hey, we're going to wish them good luck tomorrow. I mean, keep Absolutely. Going. Thanks, guys. Yeah, because, you know, I also marched back in the day in a double shot. You know, one competition during the day is long enough, but to do two in one day is just is just crazy. And we wish we wish the Marching Panthers very well on their trip to Wahama and Herbert Hoover and bring home lots of trophies. And I want to say also, you know, to Jamie there, you know, to all the parents out there that support this, mm-hmm. to support the athletics, support the band, to support all the extracurricular activities, you know, this is – it's a big, it's a big deal to them because it takes a lot of time, it's a lot of effort, it's a lot of fun. I do agree, but you know, a special shout out to all the parents and the, and the support you show these kids. Yeah, I appreciate that, and I will say I've noticed that the uh, the Panther football team parents and band parents uh, really, really good show up this year. Uh, they, the parents have been working their tails off for everything, so we'll uh, go ahead and watch this show. I, I'm telling you guys, it's it's an awesome show. All right, so we're going to go off the air for a minute and have everybody here at Armstrong watching on Channel 4 and Channel 100 enjoy the Ripley Viking Marching Band. All right, folks, we're back here at Hamlin Lions Club Field. We're going to be starting the second half here in just a moment, and uh, Brian Vance has his iPad out. Brian, you got some scores from around the state of West Virginia for us? Yes, we do. It looks like uh, Tulsa right now in the second quarter is up 14-6 to six on Chapmanville. I believe you picked the Rebels in that one, Mr. BV. Here's another one we picked. It looks like uh, second quarter Greenbrier East is up 13-6 to six on Parkersburg South. How about the Knights and the Wolves? Spring Valley, Campbell Midland, you got a... Got a score at least on that one there, Brian. That one. Another update for Mingo Central up 14 to nothing on Logan. All right, go Miners. Uh, looks like it's still 14 to nothing. Second quarter, uh, Kevin Millen over Spring Valley. Okay, pretty good ball. Game how about right the um, how about the um, Riverview Nicholas County game, Brian? Uh, let's see if I can find that one. It'll probably be in your double A column, Nicholas County. Ranked number 11. I will say real quick, it's 21 to 6 Huntington over St. Albans in the second quarter. 21 to 6 Huntington over St. Albans. All right. Uh, Nicholas County's up 21 to nothing on Riverview in the second quarter. Actually, the first quarter, so yeah, I guess you get an update on that one. Okay, so here we go. Bryce and Justin kicking off for the Panthers as we start the second half here at Hamlin Lions Club Field. Panthers in a deep hole, trailing the Vikings, Ripley. And there he goes, nice return over midfield to about the 48, 47-yard line of Lincoln County. It's a nice return for Ripley after the second half kickoff. Martin again is piling up yardage here, all-purpose yards, Brian on returns and from the backfield, from his running back position as well. And here come the Vikings, first and ten. Ball on the Lincoln County side of the 50, first and ten. On the pass of 49. Okay, so the Vikings from their spread formation, two running backs in the backfield with quarterback Trevor Trevor Tucker, that's Martin, breaking free. Martin spinning 10 yards, 15, 16, 17 yards on that carry before he's tackled out of bounds by the Panthers' defense. But, again, a 16-yard pickup for Martin on first down, Brian. Uh, Viking, the Vikings are picking up right where they left off. Yeah, they are. Uh, again, a huge hole. The first contact's deep in the secondary. And he's a good enough running back that yes. we need to get him before he gets started. Exactly right. First and 10, Ripley from the Panther, 32. Timeout for equipment. Oh, he's good. Okay, referee stopped play momentarily, but here we're back to action. Early in the second half, Ripley leads Lincoln County, 35 nothing. 15's keeping. That's number 15 for Ripley. Flag on the play. Got a flag on the play. Should be a block in the back, I guess. Possibly be a block in the back on that play. Lane Casto, the ball carrier. Lane Casto, the ball carrier for Ripley. He's brought down by Lincoln County's Austin Scraggs. That's going to be a hold against the Vikings, and that's 10 yards from the spawn of the foul. So we're going to back him up 10 and try it again. You know, it's three times I've seen Scraggs coming up from the safety position to make a tackle by the backfield. I mean, that's, that's a good play of a young kid. Right. To, to recognize that play and come up and, and make the stop, that's great. Not good. Nice leading tackle, so. Yes, that's a great point, Jamie. It's not good, though, Brian, when your safeties and your corners are the leading tacklers on the team, right? That very true, very true. Okay, so Ripley's going to face a second down and long from the Lincoln County 44. 
Trevor Tucker in the shotgun formation. Harrison split wide to his right. He's going to take, and he's going to give it to number two, Jake Martin, who is stuffed after about a two-yard gain on the carry. Brings up third and long for Ripley here in the opening moments of the third quarter, their opening drive here in the second half, leading Lincoln County 35 to nothing here at Hamlin Lions Club Field. The Vikings do not huddle. They get their play signaled in from the sideline. As you see, the school players and the linemen just standing there looking over at the sideline, getting the play. Tucker will call the play at the line of scrimmage from the shotgun formation. Two receivers to his left split, one to his right. That's Kate Harrison. Two. Nope. Tucker takes and fakes it to Martin. He's going to take it around left end. He gets a block, and that's Tucker. Picking up positive yardage again here on third down. It's going to be about eight yards, seven yards, six yards shy of the first down. It brings up fourth down, though. The Vikings will probably go for it here, Brian. What do you think here? Kind of in no man's land on the field. You know, too far for a field goal, maybe too short for a punt. And the way their offense has been clicking. Stop was made by 30. Yeah, exactly. Unless the end of the field will try. Okay, so we're going to wait and see what the referees do here. Look, it looks like we've also got a penalty on the play. Didn't see the flag come out, but apparently it did. Locking door to waste. How's that blocking? How's that on the defense? Okay, so apparently we've got a a a block below the waist against Lincoln County on defense, which I'm scratching my head about. But again, it gives gives the Vikings a first and ten. And they're moving closer and closer. Tucker back to pass, looking deep down the field. He's looking for Harrison. He mixed up on the signal there. Harrison went in. Tucker throws to the Tucker throws to the corner. It's incomplete. It's going to bring up a second down for the Vikings at the Lincoln County 19-yard line. Second down and 10 upcoming. It's the first bad passing play they've had, really. So, again, that's just a mix up there on offense, you think, Brian, between Tucker and Harrison? Yeah, I'm not sure. We had good coverage on him that time. So, you know, I'm not sure the quarterback might have been just kind of throwing away a little bit. Two. Jake Martin around right in. He's got two blockers. He's going to take it and get pushed out of bounds, though. But he's going to pick up positive yardage, probably four yards, maybe five on that carry. Good seal block on the outside right there to free him up. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Third down. Okay, so third down upcoming. It's going to be third down and short. chain gang was trying to move okay so Ripley will face a third and one just outside the Panthers 10 yard line Tucker from his shotgun take straight drop back has a man wide open that's number three and he dropped it he dropped it he was wide open that's Cody Harris who's caught two touchdowns from Tucker tonight but he drops it as he was going in Brian a little maybe I got this I'm gonna go ahead and take my eyes off and turn in for the score exactly he was running before he, he was running before he already scored before he caught that pass yeah okay so fourth and short for the Vikings they can pick up a first down without scoring here and it's Tucker from the shotgun. Two receivers split left, one to his right. He's going to take and he's going to throw it deep up high for Harrison, but it's going to fall out of bounds in the back of the end zone. And the Vikings, believe it or not, stall their own drive. And the Panthers will take over first and ten, holding the Ripley offense on their first drive here in the second half, Brian. I tell you what else was nice there. We finally got a little bit of pressure on the QB there. You know, Tucker actually had a guy in his face when he threw that, which definitely affected that throw. So it was nice to see that we actually got some pressure on him. And I noticed we had double coverage on 10 that time, so we've got his number, hopefully, the rest of this game. Okay, so here comes Jake Ashley in the Panther offense, their opening drive here of the second half. He's going to take and pitch out to Chaz Wiley. Wiley's going to cut it up inside the blocks, and he's going to pick up positive yardage on first down, two yards, maybe three on the carry. By the interior line. And again, the Panthers, as Brian alluded to earlier in the first half, and Jerry also commented on as well, no quit in these Panthers, despite their 0-7 record, and they're down 35 nothing, but they're still playing football out there, guys. Oh, exactly right. Not only that, you got to give O-line credit here. The way they're stacking the defense right there, first mm-hmm. game positive yardage consistently. They've played really well tonight. Okay, so we've got a second down, and we'll call it seven here at Hamlin Lions Club Field for Lincoln County. Jake Ashley under center sends a man in motion. He's going to give to 35. That's Brian Miller. He's been a workhorse tonight for the Panthers. He's going to pick up two, maybe three yards on the carry before being tracked down by the Vikings defense. Jerry, what do you see for Lincoln County? I mean, you're down 35 to nothing in the second half. Do you just stick to the game plan and try to put some points on the board or what? 
Uh, as far as sticking to the game plan goes, um, no. They're running on the ball a little too much to be down by 35 points. I think uh, it's time to go to the air a little bit. Even though you are this close, you're risking the interception, but you don't really have much to lose when you're down 35 nothing. That's true. Okay, here comes Lincoln County, their Achilles heel, third down. They're going to take, and they're going to give it to 28. That's Blake Taylor right up the middle, but he's going to be stopped. Uh, correction, 35. Brian Miller on the carry right up the middle, but he's going to be stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. That's going to bring up a fourth down and about two and a half yards to go for the first down. So it looks like Coach Christian will elect to punt. Again, He the Panthers are deep in their own territory. Despite trailing 35 to nothing, I do believe this is the right play call here. You don't want to give Ripley a short field if you don't pick up the two and a half yards, Brian. Uh, it would just give him a score. If you're right. just close here, then that's really what you're well, doing. Well, and you do you want to use this as a learning, give your defense something to work at. Let's let's fine-tune what we can here. And Austin Scrag gets the punt off, and it's a short wobbler, but it's going to take a Lincoln County bounce, and it's going to roll out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. But again, here come the Vikings' potent offense, Tucker and Harrison coming back out. And it's going to be first and 10 for the Vikings on the Panther side of the football field here, uh, Jerry, from the 43-yard line. Again, another short field for the Vikings. Yeah, once again, they're starting with good field position and a good chance to strike, take a couple strikes to the end zone. Although uh, the quarterback's past couple, the past few passes here have looked the best. Uh, they've been a little wobbly and overthrown. I'm okay with that. Brian, you okay with wobbly yeah, passes from, from Tucker? I'm okay with that. Absolutely. <laughs> Yes. All right. So Ripley facing a first and 10. This is their second drive of the second half. He's going to take and give it to Jake Martin right up through the defense. And he's got a whole host of blockers. Martin stops his momentum trying to cut back and does not. He's snuffed out of bounds by the Panther defense. He's brought down by Tanner Price from Lincoln County. But not after picking up enough yardage for a first down, Brian. And here comes the Vikings. High octane offense. Spread them out. Get them out in space and see what you can do with it. Yeah, this is actually I – mean, I can see right now we've substituted some right now to get some guys some more experience right sure. now. I mean, at that point right now in the, in the ball game, that's really what you're looking to do, now to grow the team and get some, get some, get some kids some experience. Keeper. Tucker's going to take and keep it. He's going to go around left end. And nice pursuit by the Panthers secondary coming up and making the play. Trevor Tucker, the ball carries. Tucker carries. He's brought down by Scraggs again, as Brian talked about earlier. Scraggs coming up from his uh, secondary position in the defense and meets him in the hole. Pick up a five yards for the Vikings. Second down and five. Tucker takes and gives it to Martin. Martin's going to pick up two, three, maybe fall forward for the four yards, and it's going to bring up third down and short for the Vikings here on the Panther side of the field here in the third quarter, leading Lincoln County 35 to nothing. Again, the Vikings go with their no-huddle attack, as a lot of teams do now. Seems like everybody's in love with the spread offense, Brian. Uh, every day, we, it seems like every year we see it grow more and more and more. Okay, that's Martin breaking free. He's going to have enough for the first down, and he and he is upended by Jake Taylor, a.k.a. the enforcer of the Lincoln County defense. That's Blake Taylor, not Jay. We're not at uh, first down. We're, we're not the Indians. <laughs> I like Taylor's enthusiasm on defense. I'll call him the enforcer. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, again, yeah. it's still f enough yardage for first down. Yeah, the spread offense works really well for teams like Ripley. Ripley, they have a lot of talent and a lot of speed on offense when they can either, well, right there, run the ball with their quarterback or He's running back. Tucker is in from 15 yards out, folks. That's Tucker. Pretty easy going, Brian. He didn't get touched until he was three yards into the end zone. Uh, exactly. They're the – Anytime you're going to give a running back or a nice player, it's a secondary of the first man to touch him, you're at a disadvantage. And, you know, I've been noticing I've got the advantage of some binoculars looking down there. Those holes, I mean, an old fat man like me, I could run through those holes. They're, they've spreading our defense out, but that's what happens when you've got a number 10. Well, when you've got somebody that can catch and he's that good of a receiver, you keep a defense back, and that gives your running game so much room to work. Well, as everyone said, the spread was really developed out of a necessity, if you have mm -hmm. a few good ball players, you want to get your superior athletes the ball in open field. As you can see, Ripley's got some uh, really good athletes, and if you get them one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of times they're going to win that battle. And that's what the spread's designed to do, to keep you out in the open field, to give your players a, a space to do what they do. Yeah, and that's exactly what they're doing. They're keeping us on our, on our heels, guessing. And so far, we don't have an answer for either the running or the passing game. You know, hopefully here we, we can use the rest of this game. It's the, It's been decided. Let's use the rest of this game as, as a learning, uh, a game time practice, game speed practice. Let's get some positives in here. Hopefully Jake can 
I don't. He he really. I don't know. He's been in a shell. Seems like tonight. Nothing like last week. No, no. Yeah, I, I did so far in this ball game, which we we focus on our ground game. And like I said early mm-hmm. on the game, we were having a lot of success on the ground game. So I can see why Coach want to stay with that. But you know, at that point right now, like you said, we're, we're going to work on things right now. Mm-hmm. We're going to work on getting to some of these young kids some experience and getting better and improving hey, things. So we might see a few more passing passes out of Jake the second half. And Blake Taylor. Little update here. Uh, okay. Mango Central is now up twenty to nothing on the Logan Wildcats. Mm-hmm. Make me a profit, miners. Make me a profit. <laughs> <laughs> Never doubt Yogi Kinder. Dustin Cooper takes it in the kickoff. He fumbled it forward. I believe he fell on it, though, folks. He did. Referee signal that Lincoln County keep retains possession after Cooper. after the kickoff. Uh, the Greenbrier East Parkersburg South game is yes, 19-13 Greenbrier East in the third quarter. So it's still undecided contest. It's getting close up in Park South. How about uh, Midland Spring Valley, Brian? Any updates there? Let's see if I can find that one here. Is it 14 to nothing still? Yet? Still 14 to nothing in favor of Campbell Midland. Okay. All right, folks, here we go. Third quarter clock rolling here. Lincoln County trails Ripley 42 to nothing. First and 10. Oh, fumble. He's going to take, we fumble. Fumble. It's fumbled. We it's it. recovered by Lincoln County. Fumble on the play. And that, there was a missed exchange there in the backfield by Lincoln County, Brian, and that could have been disastrous for us right there. No, no, but Taylor just dropped it. You know, I will say we observed, I think yeah. we have uh, eight seniors on this team. Correct. That's all, eight seniors. You know, so, uh, I mean, like I said, we're starting a lot of young kids right Yes, here. we are. Yes, we are. We are as green as the grass in front of us. And that's okay. The youth movement will start. And almost as old. And almost as old. That's a great That's a great analogy there, Jamie. That's great. All right, so we got second down, and we'll call it 15 for the Panthers. Here on their second drive of the third quarter. Man in motion. Takes, gives. And that's Chaz Wiley. He's going to be met right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe even a loss on the play as the Viking defense, Jerry, is ganging up on the line of scrimmage, moving eight, nine, almost ten guys in the box to try to stop this double-wing attack from Lincoln County. Well, it seems like at this point that the Vikings know what's going to happen here, that Lincoln County is going to try to run it in some direction, either that it's going to uh, Blake or Chaz. So they've, they've keyed in on those two players, and I really think a play-action play to get out of the messy situation close to the end zone down here might work good. On third and long, and this is going to be bring up fourth down. Lake Taylor carry. We're going to give Taylor 12. 12 yards on that carry. It's going to bring up fourth down and about, let's call it six yards to go for the first down. Again, here in the third quarter, Lincoln County trailing 42 to nothing. But again, Brian, deep in your own territory, it, you have to punt here. And yeah, and you know, when you're pinned deep like that right there, yeah. it really does limit the amount of play calling that you have, options that you have. Knowing that it, if any error right now could definitely cost you another score. Austin Craggs takes the punt. Austin Craggs, excuse me, takes the uh, snap and punts the ball, keeping it away from Martin that time. Punt rolls out of bounds just over the midfield stripe onto the Ripley side of the football. Ripley side of the field, excuse me. And the Vikings and their potent offense coming back out. Ripley will have the ball first and 10 at their own 49. But again, Brian, you know, it's on their side of the field, but the 49, you might as well say, you know, it's a short field. Oh, it is, especially for this offense and the playmakers they have. I mean, right now it's a three-man show. You know who to look for here. Okay, so late substitution by the Panthers on defense. Here we go. Vikings, number two, that's Jake Martin weaving, running. He's got a host of blockers, and Harrison is out in front leading the way. Martin will go untouched into the end zone as he slides his way in from a 51-yard score on first down. And, again, Ripley has the spread offense just clicking on all cylinders tonight. Jerry, what do you think about Martin so far from his running back spot for Ripley? He's definitely a quick player. Uh, He seems to be able to get the ball in from anywhere on the field. But what I was impressed with was Harrison's block on that play. Um, He actually looked like the running back had – the defense could have brought the running back down there if it wasn't for that one big block right there. It was was a smart heads-up block by the wide receiver. Okay. Easton Berry comes in for the extra point kick. Snap. 
hold, kick is up and through the uprights as Barry splits the uprights. So midway through the third quarter, Ripley is ahead 49 to nothing. And Brian Vance, we talked about it all day in the pregame. Jerry, we've talked about it all day in the pregame. We just, I don't know. What, I mean, what do you do? I mean, we have a game plan on defense, and they have just run roughshod through the Panthers' defense. Well, and as we said, that's what the spread is actually designed to do. They have three really good athletes, and they've continuously got those three really good athletes open in space. If you're going to put that kind of talent open in space, it's going to be tough to stop. Three in the third quarter. It does show, though, I do believe this, Ryan, that uh, their record was... One in six coming in, Brian. Yeah, who are they kind of, the Packers? Kind of shows the strength of the Mountain State Athletic Conference. Oh, absolutely. What a great conference We, this we were is. in the MSAC for six years. We know exactly what that was exactly like, Brian. Exactly right. That just shows Jerry, really the strength of that conference. Yeah, Jerry, you were in. You were at Lincoln County High during a couple of those years while we were still in MSAC. You remember what it was like. I, I went to Scott, actually. Oh, you went to Scott. Okay, Sorry, my, my I went, bad. I did. Um, we have a Skyhawk in our broadcast exactly. booth? Exactly. What? No, uh, 10. But you're right. Hey, Taylor making a move here on the return, folks. Flag. Got a flag on the play, probably a block in the back. You're right, though. It's it's definitely a tough conference because, I mean, you can tell by looking at Ripley right now, they're, they're for sure not playing like a 1-6 in six team. Okay, so we've got hold during the return. That's going to be from the spot of the foul where the flags are, folks. So it's going to be a 10-yard penalty marked off, and the Panthers are going to start up, start this drive way back in their own territory from their own 12-yard line. We'll call it the 11, actually. And again, really, I mean, from an offensive coordinator standpoint right here, it limits the amount of plays you can run when you're pinned deep like this. Sure, absolutely. Not like we we're down 49 to nothing, and looks like we're going to let Ashley grip it and rip it, as we say. At least it looks like way. He's got trip receivers out to his right. He's back in the shotgun with Taylor on his left hip. It's not like the score can get a whole lot worse. It can't. So. Sends Wiley in motion from left to right. He's going to take and fake it to Taylor. Roll out to his right, and he finds Wiley out in the flat. Wiley's got room to run. Wiley's going to pick up 9, 10, give him 11 yards on the pass reception from, Ashley. I, from Ashley. Chaz Wiley. It's going to be enough for a first down, Brian Vance. They're on, on uh, deep in your own hole, oh, swing it out. And, again, a, a spread-type play from Lincoln County. Got one of our better players out in space, and he used his speed and picked up a first, nice first down. Well-designed play. Well-designed play. Good read by Jake. I mean, you know, we had the three-receiver set there. So, really, it was a short guy that was open. It was a good mm-hmm. read, good, good check down for him. So basically that play was designed, you have the three guys split out, they run run the safeties off, and then you drop in underneath and pick up the first down. Fumble. All right, so a quick pitch to Wiley was fumbled in the backfield, but he does recover the fumble. But again, negative play on first down. It's going to be a loss of two on the play. It's going to be second down and 12 for Lincoln County. And, yeah, when you said the score can't really get much worse, yeah, you, you, sure, you definitely got that right. But, mm-hmm. you know, I definitely think they should start uh, letting Jake Ashley throw the ball, maybe get some positives and maybe a little bit of momentum heading into next week against Riverview. Yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and get him a little bit of confidence back because he's, he's took a good beating tonight as far as his confidence goes. So let's let's let him build up for next week. And that little pass that we just saw him complete, um, I think might have been his first for the night, but it was de- it definitely looked more like the Jake Ashley that we saw against Nicholas County last week. All right. So the uh, Lincoln County Panthers have a nice counter play in mind, but it, the ball is ripped out as it comes through the line of scrimmage, for, and the pump fumble goes forward, and it is picked up by the Vikings defense. So here comes Ripley, Trevor Tucker, Cade Harrison, and company coming back out with another with a very short field this time to start this drive thanks to the turnover by Lincoln County. They're going to have a first and 10 just outside the 25-yard line. We'll call it the 26. Here in the third quarter of play, Vikings leading Lincoln County 49 to nothing. All right, we've got a timeout on the play. It's going to be timeout Lincoln County. Okay, Brian, so you're down 49 to nothing. Midway through your third quarter, you're here at home. You know, you've got Riverview coming in next week, who I believe is losing currently to um, Nicholas County, who we played last week. 
you know, Riverview would probably come in three and five, maybe. I think they were three and four heading into Nicholas yeah, County, something like that. Well, right uh, uh, now. You know, and Riverview is, is, is a smaller school than Lincoln County. We've played them in the past. Last year, uh, we went down to um, Bradshaw, West Virginia, a long haul down, almost into Virginia. And, uh, you know, Riverview had their way with us. So, you know, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. What do you think? I mean, a little quick preview for coming up next week. Well, again, you know, right now, you, you want to think that you, you still keep these kids' spirits up because, again, we're a young team. Nice pressure. Complete. Good, good hit on the quarterback. Here. All right, let's take a look at that. Yeah. Trevor Tucker went back good to pass, chance. and as the ball and was as the down. ball was released, he got rocked in the Ooh. backfield. Looks like we got a little smack talk going on. That's one thing you don't want. I believe that was number 44, Nicholas Johnson, who just said hello to Mr. Tucker. Welcome to Hamlin, sir. Tucker's going to take another deep drop. He's looking for Harrison, and that was well defended by the Panthers secondary. He got away with one. I see no flags on the play, so I'm going to say great pass breakup by the Lincoln, De- Lincoln County secondary. They bracketed to look like they're Harrison on that play. Had a guy in front and a guy right behind him, Brian. Exactly, and you know, Again, I was saying earlier, this is, this is where you're going to teach these young kids. Yeah. You know, as a coach, you still coach them up. They still play hard. This is where they can definitely gain a lot, gain a lot of experience and a lot of learning. Absolutely. So third down and 10 for Tucker and the Ripley Vikings. Tucker is going to keep it. He's springing outside, and he's going to roll forward. He's going to pick up positive yards. He's going to be short of the first down marker, though. He's going to pick up seven, maybe eight yards on that play. Blake Taylor. Blake Taylor in on the stop for Lincoln County. Scoring up fourth down and about three yards to go for the first down. And it looks like Tucker and the offense are going to stay on the field. He's got a receiver split way out to his left. And then Harrison. And looks like Harris in the slot to his right. Running back on his hip, and he sends 34 in motion. Lincoln County has jumped offsides, and I believe if that is a five-yard penalty against Lincoln County, dead ball, false start against Ripley. Against Ripley. So that's going to back up Ripley. Five yards. So maybe, Brian, uh, as, as that rule has changed over the years, maybe the lineman baited the defender to jump. That and the ref saw what it. That, was. that has to be what that was. Either way, I'll take that penalty here at the Panther Sports Network. I'll take it with a grain of salt. You know, I'm not a big fan of this either. Starting quarterback still in. This this contest is decided. You're taking a big chance here. That's uh, something that's kind of surprised and me right passing now. passing the ball at that. It has kind of surprised me. Yeah. Let's wrap up the W and get out of town. Vikings 49, the Lincoln County Panthers nothing. Okay, folks, that's going to end the third quarter of play here. Ripley leading Lincoln County 49 to nothing. And, again, as as Jamie alluded to earlier, I I kind of agree with that. But then under the same token, Brian, you know, you've got to get your reps in for your first team offense, even though the the game was decided uh, at halftime. You know, and it's the defense's job to try and stop you. It you know, so so where do you, you – know, I agree with Jamie, though. I say call the dogs off. You know, you've still got three games to go. Both, both sides – you know, both teams. Ripley's got three games to go. We've got three games to go. And you want to have those players for those three games, you know? Uh, yeah, you know, I understand that you want to get the, the kids' stats up for a little bit. You know, they may have aspirations on the next level. So you, you, you want to try to get them some stats. But in situations like this right here, you know, there is a risk. There is a risk that you're taking to those players right there that, you know, something could easily happen to them in this game. And, and unfortunately, you hate to see that. It could possibly end a career on, on, on a situation that it really doesn't need to have. Yeah, that's definitely right. And you, But you have to also look at the, you know, Lincoln County is already starting to make some – put some subs in there on defense and on offense and especially right there when they just went to the air and scored a touchdown um, it's it's unnecessary now for them to leave their starters in there's no point for it and on the first play of the fourth quarter folks that's ripley finding the end zone again that's tucker to Cade harrison 24 yards for the score so with the extra point upcoming from easton barry ripley leads 55 to nothing here at hamlin lions club field on the first play of scrimmage in the fourth quarter here. You know, I noticed that they have substituted some linemen, but again, you're, they're, they're leaving their three best players in the ball game and, and with their offense. Just, I think the coach is taking a big risk here. 
yeah. not just that you you would imagine them at this point in the game wanting to run the ball and get you know keep the clock going but that's not what they're doing they're passing the ball going in the air risking the clock to stop and trying to put points on the board when they don't need to do that yeah not a big fan of of, of padding stats never have been a big fan of of padding stats okay well while we have a moment uh our czar of the stat sheet our stat wizard, Jamie Jones, has pulled up some updated scores from around the state. Number one, Huntington, 42, St. Albans, 6 in the third quarter. Also, Oak Hill is down to number two, Bluefield, 31-7. Point Pleasant is leading Shady Spring, Brian, 49 to nothing in the third quarter. And let's see if we can find that. There it is. Cabell Midland, 21, Spring Valley, 7 in the third quarter. All right, moving on down, we've got uh, number 11, South Charleston, 26, Riverside, 12 in the third quarter. And we're going to look at a battle of bitter rivals in Putnam County, Hurricane leading Winfield, 34-21 in the third quarter. Good ball game. Okay, we're going to roll on down through here and see if we can find some other scores. Wayne is rolling polka, 48-7, third quarter. The Pioneer train just keeps rolling. The Wayne train. Okay, here we go. Kickoff for the Panthers. And we've got a pitch back, and he's got room to run. Bounces off a would-be tackler, and he's still rolling, rolling. That's Blake Taylor, the enforcer, picking up nice positive yardage from about the 10-yard line. Pitch back to him at about the 12, and he's going to bring it all the way out to the 41-yard line on the kickoff return. So 30, so 30 yards on the return. The Panthers set up shop in really pretty good field position here, Brian, at their own 41-yard line here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I mean, exactly. This, this, you know, believe it or not, this is probably the best starting field position we've had this whole entire second half. Okay, Brian, another quick score update. Number 11, Nicholas County, 41, Riverview. Lincoln County's next opponent, nothing. That is good news. <laughs> All right, we've got a uh, third quarter score from Mingo County. Mingo Central leading Logan 21-7. 35 on the carry. Summer 35, Brian Miller. He's been a workhorse. His forward progress is going to give him two yards on the carry. It's going to bring up second down and eight, Brian. Out of curiosity, did anybody right. call that Mingo Logan game? I'm sorry? I, I don't know. Did anybody call that Mingo Logan game? <laughs> I think, I think somebody me. did. That was me, wasn't it? Did I call that game? No, no, you said the Wildcats. Are I you remember. Sure? You wrote it down. We might have to go to tape on that one. We I'm can. <laughs> we can. We'll go to tape. <laughs> All right. We're going to have a timeout here uh, called by Lincoln County as they get the regrouped here, and they're going to call up a play. So Jamie's going to check out some more scores here for us. Anything of interest? Mm, not really. All right. Let's uh, let's take I a moment. I can say this real quick, uh, Ryan. I sure. have spoken to uh, Coach Christian, and something that's, that I really like what he's trying to do. Uh, as far as talking to maybe the middle school coaches and even some of the major league coaches, uh, he's trying to maybe have a coaching clinic this summer and a mm-hmm. camp for the kids, because that's what I think will really drum up the interest. If you can get the you know to show the head coaches sure. really interested and involved in building a program here, you know we've talked about Wayne and that's what Wayne has going on right now. They have a, a right. program through through the youth football and all the way up. And what I've noticed too, Brian, with with Wayne at least. Um, you know, they start everything, you know, from their midget league levels. You know, by the, by the time they get to high school, they're not learning fundamentals. They're not learning new offensive plays. They have the same system in place from midget league through middle school all the way into high school. And I think that's also a testament to Coach Harmon and, and his program there at Wayne. Oh, exactly. And, and that's kind of, the, kind of the same thing right now that uh, Coach Christian's talking about doing. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and to build that from the ground up. And, you know, uh, this year's team, yeah, they've struggled, but we've seen a lot of positives out of this team. Mm-hmm. You know, they've got a lot of room to grow. Uh, 35. Okay, Brian Miller's going to take the handoff from Ashley here on second down. Miller's stopped by the interior line. And he is stopped by a whole host of Vikings on their defensive unit. Yeah, he's going to take it to maybe a yard. It's going to bring up third down and about seven for Lincoln County. All right, Brian, here we go. Third down conversion for Lincoln County coming up. They are one for nine so far in the game. Here's his third down conversion attempt number 10 on the night. Third down 
and seven. Ashley Anderson sends a man in motion. It's going to take, and he's going to give to Brian Miller, who's got some room to run. Miller is going to fall it forward. He's got a first down for Lincoln County. Give him seven, eight, nine yards on that carry, and it's first down for Lincoln County as they cross the midfield stripe, Brian, and they're heading into Ripley territory. Miller's running well tonight. You know, I know that they, you see the score, and you try to wonder what pot is are. Miller has really won well tonight. Okay, so here comes Jake Ashley out to the huddle, and he's got the play from Coach Christian. First and 10, Lincoln County from the Ripley 47. Here in the fourth quarter, Panther, Panthers have yet to get on the scoreboard trailing the Vikings 56 0. What's interesting is that Brian Miller is actually a freshman along with Jake Ashley, so those two could become pretty powerful together through the next through their high school years. Oh, I mean, exactly. Uh, you know, you see this score now, and, and you think things look bleak, but actually, two years from now, this score may be reversed. Yeah, you're right, and I'll take that. Again, you know, any program to be built from the ground level up like this, you know, it's going to take its time. Oh, sure, sure. Rome wasn't built in a day. No, it wasn't. And Coach Christian's really, he's going to emphasize the weight room in the offseason. With these young kids, I'm telling you, there is a huge difference between the ages of 15 and 18. And Austin Scraggs, the team's leading tackler tonight, is only a sophomore. Okay, so that's number two, Chaz Wiley. He's going to be wrapped up in the backfield by a host of Vikings. He's going to lose two yards on the carry after on the first down carry by Blake Taylor netted a yard. So the Panthers are going to be facing a third and long coming up on their on their initial drive here in the fourth quarter. You know, you was talking about Rome wasn't built in the day. I know from military experience, the wars are won by little tiny battles. Right now, the Panthers need to win a small battle. They need to get on the scoreboard. They need some confidence in these young men's hearts and minds. And right now, that would be a major accomplishment and a morale booster for these young Panthers. Okay, so here we go. Third down and 10 for the Panthers. Ashley takes from the shotgun. He's going to give to the first back through. That's number 35, Brian Miller. Miller out for a nice gainer. And that's first down yardage for the Panthers from their own 47. Looks like the ball is going to be he's going to be pushed out of bounds. Give 25 yards on third down, Brian, and the Panthers convert just their second third down of the night. And as Jamie alluded to earlier, I mean, we've got to put one in the scoreboard. The last three games, we've scored 13 points we've been shut out twice and that would be huge that would be huge but it's nice to see that a that a freshman running back yeah is being a workhorse tonight oh by far brian miller has proved his worth tonight so far okay we've got a first and 10 folks here for lincoln county that's number 35. Number 35, Brian, Brian Miller again, again. Brian Miller again. carries on first down. He's going to pick up seven, maybe eight yards on the carry. It's going to bring up second down and short. And Miller, who's been running hard, running hard through most of this game, showed some speed on the play before last getting to the edge. Okay, so Lincoln County huddles. Second down play coming up. We'll call it second down and seven for Lincoln County. And they are just at the 20-yard line. Red zone time for the Panthers. We need to punch this one in. That's Chaz Wiley going around right in. He's got some blockers, folks. He's down inside the fi- inside the 10, inside the 5. And Wiley's going to have first and goal for the Panthers, Brian. Here we go. Need to punch this win. Try to punch this one in. And realize that Chaz Wiley is a junior, so he'll be back next year. Okay, first and 10 for the young Panther offense coming up here. First and goal from the five. Four plays to punch one in here if you're a Lincoln County Panther fan. Ashley under center, double wing attack. Tanner Price split wide to his right. Gives it to Miller. Miller pushes the ball forward. And he's met hard right at the one-yard line, but that's going to be a gain of four for Miller and the offense. Second down and goal coming up from looks like the one-yard line. Morgan. I bet we don't see any play action here, Brian. I say we, I say we see some smash mouth football out of Coach Christian here and the boys in the black. Uh, that's exactly what you're going to see here. Guaranteed, that's what you're going to see here. I'm laying money on 35 out of the gate. All right, he Jamie Jones to... says he's picking Secretariat Brian Miller to punch this one in. Oh, and I was right, but the penalty. 
All right, penalty flag on the play as it gets going. We've got offsides against the Vikings, so the ball on the one, it'll be moved half the distance to the goal, so we're going to take a step and move it a little bit closer. <laughs> so instead of second and goal from the one, we've got second and goal from the half-yard line. Timeout, Ripley. Well, look here, we need to punch this in. Like we talked earlier, let's get a moral victory here, and let's give our defense a little bit of heart, a reason to come out this next series, kick off, pin our ears back. Let's play with a little bit of pride. We're beat, but you know what? Let's go ahead and win this little battle. That way we build for next year. That way we're competing with, with Ripley. We're, comp we're, we're mentioned in the same sentence as Wayne. As these other programs later on, you know, it's, it's going to be remembered as, hey, I was on the Panthers that built the program in Lincoln County. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's exactly right. That is exactly what is I, I do believe that's going to happen here. Well, I, I think Coach Christian has a really good plan. He's got a long term plan in place. Yeah. Like I said, two years from now, this may be the opposite. I yeah. do believe that we oh, yeah. have the talent oh, yeah. to do that. Yeah. We have a lot of young kids that are, are, and you can see right now, they're still playing hard, so they've got heart and they love the game. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I guarantee you, we punch this in the end zone. You're not going to see a bunch of guys just dragging off the field. You're going to see some elated Panthers that were pumped up. We're ready to go. Hey, we, we scored. Exactly. All right, folks, here we go. If you're listening to us and watching this broadcast, you can only watch it on Armstrong Cable, Channel 4, Channel 100 on your dial. If you're not an Armstrong, an Armstrong subscriber, you're missing out on Panther Sports Network. Second and goal from the half-yard line, 35. He's in. Yes. Touchdown, Lincoln County. Brian Miller, the workhorse tonight, has finally got the Panthers, and the Panthers have converted a red-down conversion, Brian. They picked up a third down. That was a nice, nice drive by Lincoln County. It really was a nice drive by them. It had a little bit of everything in this drive. I mean, we ran inside, we ran outside. Again, we've had success on the ground this whole ball game, really. I, I know that the score really does not show how much success we've had on the ground. But again, even on the first half, we were moving the ball down the field, get inside the 20, a couple little mistakes here and there. Those compound, those compound, and guess what? Next thing you know, the score is this bad. And I finally got to ride a touchdown star on the Panther stat sheet, so it's awesome. All right, Jake Ashley in to attempt the extra point kick. Snap, hold, kick is up, and it is no good. It's wide right. But, again, the Panthers are on the scoreboard, folks, so with about half of the fourth quarter remaining, probably eight minutes or so to go, Panthers are on the board, trailing Ripley 56-6. to six. Again, another confidence booster, as we said before, for these young kids. You know, with an, with an off-season program that Coach Christian's talk about, mm -hmm. the strength and conditioning, that's what's going to make this team. As we always said, football games aren't won here. They're won in the off-season. As you can see right now, you know, Ripley's got some good athletes, you know, and they've got – I'd say a really good off-season program because, as you can tell, you don't get this fast, this strong in a day. It's going to take time. All right, Jerry. Uh, Panthers have a nice drive there. Punch one in the end zone. We need to do that again, you think? We definitely need to do that again to get some momentum heading into the next week's game against Riverview. But you have to give props to the coach and to these players for sticking it out and, uh, and hanging with their game plan there that's running the ball and not sh stra straying away from that even despite the score. Okay, here we go, folks. It's going to be big Bryson Justice, number 77 for Lincoln County. He's going to kick this one off after the one-yard touchdown run by Brian Miller. And Bryson takes the ball, and he kicks it deep away from the receivers. And it's picked up at the eight-yard line. And he's going to be tracked down nice tackle. and tackled. That's a nice open field tackle by Lincoln County Special Team Unit and the Ripley Vikings. That's Austin Scraggs again, as you were saying. No doubt he's, he's the leading tackler tonight for the Panthers on defense and special teams. How many times have we called his name tonight? Oh, several. I bet he's I bet he's in double figures easy. I mean, he's been all over the field on defense. Okay, so here comes the Vikings in their potent offense. First and ten from their own 23-yard line. Here late in the fourth quarter, Ripley leads Lincoln County 56-6. Panthers coming off a touchdown drive just a few moments ago. Give 22 yards to somebody. 15, that's all he's getting. Okay, first and 10. 
Ripley comes out. I see some clean white jerseys out there. I do believe we've seen the last of Harrison and Tucker. That's Chase Morgan on the carry for Ripley. He's going to pick up positive yardage on first down. Give him a yard on first down, second down, and nine for Ripley. You know, this is a point we made earlier. Yeah. The youth and the, that we have on this team, this is the future of Ripley. Mm-hmm. What we're seeing right now is what they'll be in a couple of years. So it's anxious to see what our kids do against them. Okay. Well, here we go. Let's wait and see. We've got uh, some time left here in the fourth quarter. Flag on the play. Flag on the play. Uh-oh. Right before the play is started. And we've got a delay of game against Ripley. That's going to be a five-yard penalty against the Vikings. Here in the fourth quarter, Ripley leading Lincoln County 56-6. to six. So we've got second down and about 14 to go here. And here comes the Viking offense. Brian, you mentioned let's see how their young players do against our young players. And I think they had some of their uh, younger players in on defense when we – took it down for that offensive drive and so that definitely is kind of hopefully a hint of what's to come for the future oh almost an interception right there and that's number seven jerry ranson's pass almost intercepted by lincoln county great defensive play great break on the ball there brian from the panther secondary and also again just enough pressure as you notice as soon as he threw the ball he was hit yes he was Okay, so third down and 14 for Ripley here in the fourth quarter. Spread formation for the Vikings. Shotgun formation, running back on his left hip. Receiver split to his left, two receivers split to his right. He's looking deep down through that ball. is bobbled and deflected and intercepted. That is Lincoln County, number 16. He's still good. And that is Cody Hobson. Cody Hobson, a junior for Lincoln County, 5'10", 210 pounds, making a great turnover and a great play and a nice return for Lincoln County. And, hey, Panther Nation's got something to roar about here at Hamlin Lions Club Field. Hey, it's nice to see a short field on this side once. Uh, yeah, there's punch in another one. Okay, so the youth movement continues here in Lincoln County as the Panthers take over first and 10. Just outside the Ripley 20 yard line, we'll call it the 21. I'll tell you what, I just did a little crunching of some numbers. Uh, 35's got 124 yards on 23 carries. Uh, my vote for player of the game. Okay, that's Brian Miller, number 35 for Lincoln County, and he's got the only score of the night, too, yeah. Jamie, I believe. I'll go ahead and second this right now. And the player okay. of the game, yeah, I think that's, you know, we'll call this the Armstrong player of the game. All right, we'll Every definitely go to Brian. First downs, one touchdown. Oh, oh. Two. That's number two, Chaz Wiley on the carry. Chaz Wiley's going to pick up positive yardage on first down as the Panthers move across the 20 yard line, Brian, down into the red zone. Second down and six for Lincoln County upcoming from the Ripley, we'll call it the 17 yard line. I will say that I just saw something that I, I couldn't catch the lineman's number that did, but literally pancaked a guy, one of their defensive linemen, at the goal line. And that's 18 yards down the field. So that's, that's uh, what you call a block. That's blocking. That's exactly right. Michael Orr. Okay, Ashley under center. He's going to take and give it to the first man through. That's Brian Miller. He's going to push the pile a little bit forward. He's going to pick up positive yardage. Two yards, maybe three on the carry. We'll wait and see where they spot the ball down at. Number 44, Chance Morgan. Three. We'll give him three yards on the carry. It's going to bring up third down and two for Lincoln County from the Ripley 14-yard line. Brian, third short. Very makeable, very makeable conversion here for Lincoln County's offense. Give it to the workhorse. Give it to, give it give to, give it to the workhorse. That's exactly right. Okay, so our stat wizard, Jamie Jones, says give it to number 35. Let's see what they do. That's Blake Taylor. He's going to elude one defender. He's going to turn it up. He's going to, he's going to have a first down, though. As Lincoln County converts another third down. And they're going to be in... First down, Panthers. First down, Lincoln County. On the run around left end by Blake Taylor. And the Panthers just outside the 10-yard line. We can't call it a first and goal yet, as the Panthers can probably pick up a first down if they get inside the one. Boy, it's nice to see that young combo inside-outside. 
I know we're heading back to the days of Newt Rockney, but the inside and outside, we got we got the combo going there. Okay. Jake Ashley under center. 35. First and 10, he's going to give it to Five Brian Miller. Five. There's a fumble on the play as Miller was taken down to the da- taken down to the field. Let's see what happens. Nope, we, we recovered. We recovered the fumble. Second down. So Lincoln County still has it. It's going to be a loss of about half a yard on the play. Second down. Second down, and we'll call it 11 for Lincoln County, just outside the Ripley 10-yard line on the 12. We got a break there. We did catch a break there, Jamie. You're right, Get falling back on that fumble. There was two white shirts right there on the ball. I don't know how we come up with that. Karma. Karma. Sometimes she's a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, second down and 11. That's number two, Chaz Wiley, trying to break free. He's going to turn the corner up the sideline. Oh, and he's pushed out of bounds. Oh, there's a flag there. Pushed out of bounds, but he picks up positive yardage. We're going to wait and see where the referee spot this ball down at. And we're going to give him two yards as the Panthers knows of the football resting just on the 10-yard line. You know what? Let's roll him out. Let's yeah. roll him out. Jerry, what do you think on this? Play action pass, maybe third and long. I'm all for the play action passes right now uh, (laughs) because they've went to Brian Miller so many times here. You have to imagine that's what the defense is looking for. Okay, so here's the double wing attack. Everybody in tight, and Ripley stacking the line of scrimmage. Ashley's got a man. He's got two. Balls is deflected away, broken up nicely by by Ripley's defense. Number eight. That's number eight for Ripley. Drew Harpold on the deflection, just simply knocking it down and brings up a fourth down and ten from the ten. I say pass again. Absolutely. Let's go. Absolutely. Okay, so fourth down and ten just outside the ten-yard line here in the fourth quarter. Lincoln County trailing Ripley 56-6. to six. Shotgun formation. No. Oh. I take that back. A spread formation. Trips to the left. Ashley is under center. Taylor in motion. 28. That's Taylor on a sweep to his left. Taylor's got room. He's got to punch it in there. If he's going to get there, he might get the first down, though, folks. He might get the first down, folks. He dove forward. He lunged for the pylon and came up just a bit short. But I think he's got enough for a first down. I'm if he does, it now, it's a first down. Brian Vance is saying to everyone watching and listening to us on Armstrong Cable, it's a first down for Lincoln County. At the end of the game. Oh, my goodness, and that is the final play of the game. So your final score here from Hamlin Lions Club Field, folks. Ripley 56, Lincoln County 6. Gentlemen, before we sign off, we'll take a few moments here to reflect and maybe talk about some highlights while our stat wizard, Jamie Jones, crunches some numbers for us. Brian, your thoughts? Again, I know the score is not reflective, but with such a young team and our ability to move the ball, really well against them. I mean, mm-hmm. we definitely saw that they have three big guns and the three bo- three big guns they had tonight showcased a lot of talent. But on offense, even in the first half, we moved the ball well against them. We moved the ball very well. Jerry, what do you what do you take from this? You know, again, you know, you're going to open up the paper tomorrow and next week in the Lincoln Journal and you're going to see, you know, Ripley beats Lincoln County 56 to 6. What do the Panthers take away from this tonight and get ready for Riverview next week? Well, Brian got it right. The score doesn't really reflect how well, especially two of the freshmen played. Brian Miller with over 100 yards rushing and. Uh, Austin Scraggs in the double digits tackling. But you have to look at towards the end of the game here where Lincoln yeah. kind of came away with some positives and hopefully some momentum heading into next week. Okay, so before we sign off here, uh, Jamie's got some stats. We were one for five passing on the night. 11 yards. With two interceptions for 11 yards. Um, again, the workhorse was uh, Brian Miller, 127 yards on 25 carries, including Lincoln County's lone touchdown. And something I want to do, I know we, you, we all have decided that Brian Miller, beyond a shadow of a doubt, player of the game, but I would like to give a shout-out and go co-players of the game from both sides of the ball. I'd like to mention Austin Scraggs for his defensive prowess tonight for Lincoln County. Uh, again, Easily double digits in tackles. And I'm not for sure. It seemed like every time there was a defensive tackle, we were calling his name. Yeah, it was like he had a – it was like the 43 from Pittsburgh. It was Palomalu all night. Everywhere you looked, <laughs> was there, he was there. All night long. He, he, was, he, he was either helping making the play or he was a step away from it. So, yeah, yeah he put a great the, game tonight. That's off Scraggs. 
Okay, so we're going to go with co-players of the game for offense. We're going to have Brian Miller, 127 on the ground, and a touchdown, and Austin Scraggs, double digits in tackles, and uh, as Jamie alluded to earlier, you know, he was either in on the tackle or probably forced it to somebody else. So next week, folks, we'll be here broadcasting again on the Armstrong Cable Channel. This is the Panther Sports Network. Next week, Lincoln County will be hosting Riverview. But I believe at last check, um, Riverview was losing to Nicholas County pretty handily, Brian. Yeah, yeah, exactly what we thought. So you know what? Hey, to, you know, we've called it before. Next week might be the night. You know, next week might be the night. These kids get their first win. And you get, again, they got to keep their heads up. Keep that heart and effort that they're showing, and I think we're going to get that win for this year's out. Absolutely. Well, here's an interesting stat, Brian, that just kind of jumps out at me. Uh, Cade Harrison, the uh, AAA leading receiver for Ripley, five catches, 102 yards, and two scores. Again, they had three big guns, and we saw them showcase tonight. Uh, uh, great, great show tonight by the young man. I kind of hated it. He was on the other side of the field. But you know what? I hope he decides to continue his football career in Morgantown. We could use him. <laughs> Hear that. <laughs> Everybody's in agreement, but one, maybe two here in the broadcast <laughs> booth. Hey, let's stay in state. Keep the talent in state. I agree. Keep the talent in state. So just to recap here, folks, we're going to give you a quick scoring summary before we go off the air. In the first quarter, Ripley opened up with a 60-yard interception return for a touchdown to make the score 7 to nothing, And then it was Jake Martin on a 70-yard punt return for a touchdown, 14 to nothing. In the second quarter. Harris scored his first touchdown from Tucker from eight yards out, and then Martin broke free on their next possession for 16 yards from his running back spot, making the score 28 to nothing. And then Harris caught his second touchdown of the night, 30 yards from Tucker, and the score at the half was 35 to nothing in favor of Ripley. Then in the third quarter, uh, Tucker broke free from his quarterback spot on a 15-yard touchdown run, making the score 42 to nothing, and then on the first play on their next possession in the third quarter, Martin broke free for a 51-yard touchdown run, making the score 49 to nothing. Then as we headed into the fourth quarter, Harrison broke free and caught a 24-yard pass from Tucker, 56 to nothing. That, I believe that was the first play of the fourth quarter. And then Miller capped off the scoring for Lincoln County with a one-yard touchdown run, making the final score 56 to 6 in favor of the Panthers. So next week, Lincoln County will host Riverview here at Hamlin Lions Club Field. This is Ryan Pritchard for Jerry Crum, Brian Vance, And the czar of the stat sheet, Jamie Jones, we're signing off from the Panther Sports Network. Hope you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. We'll see you next week.